Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages. This is Rich Lang, once again welcoming you to yet another monthly session of our special roundtable panel discussion, Meet the Chicago Historians. Our show comes to you pre-recorded from the John DeVita Recording Studio, right here on Chicago's Great Northwest Side. Now here's that guy himself, our producer, John DeVita. From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, January the 21st, the year 2013. Today's panel will be talking about everyday life in Chicago, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So sit back and enjoy Meet the Chicago Historians, and now to start today's broadcast, here is our announcer, Rich Lang. Now here's our moderator, the poor man's Pinky Lee, and our answer to Gordon Peterson, Jack Ryan. <coughs> oh, thank you for that build-up. I wonder who wrote that copy anyway. Gee, I wonder. Well, folks, it's mid midwinter, and uh, we've had very little snow. And uh, well, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We should have things should be seasonal, wouldn't you say? If you snow now and not in April, well, to have some buildup anyway. But in, in its own way, it's cold, but it's a beautiful day, and it's also the uh, Martin Luther King holiday, a federal holiday. So many businesses and all governmental offices are closed, as well as the banks. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. So anyway, on this day, we are, we are commemorating not just Dr. King, but the uh, civil rights movement itself, and Something at the time, uh, maybe people were a little aggravated about marches that were going on, but it was a political movement, and we look back on it. Now, it's uh, probably it was probably a, a good thing for progress, although at the time it was aggravating. I know, I know when we lived near, not too far from Marquette Park, which seemed to be a target a lot of times for these marches, but uh, when you think about it, whether or not you agreed with Dr. King at the time, and this is, uh, this is once again, is my opinion. We can kick it around a little bit. You never heard Dr. King calling for special set-asides and that people should be jumped over whether or not that they were, had the ability to do something, a job. He just, you know, no, 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 in other words, what's come to be known as um, uh, affirmative action as far as admissions to schools or whatever. Uh, but Dr. King, he only wanted a fair shot, a man who could do the job, could, was qualified, and not to be discounted because he was black, white, green, or whatever. So anyway, it is a federal holiday, and we all can remember him. He's part of history now. Uh, he was uh, killed at age, what was he, 40, 39? 39, 39, 39 years old. I believe, yes. And uh, I can well remember, I was on the police department in Chicago for close to 35 years, and the night that happened, we were coming down. I was coming down as a 21-year-old young white kid in the elevators at Robert Taylor Homes around 50th and Federal. And you know, it, was, it was already April, so it was warm up. Kids are all out around. And uh, with a, by the way, with a young, another young white kid that I came on the job with, same age, and the kids are starting to say, Dr. King's been killed. Dr. King's been killed. And I said, boys, now don't be disrespectful. Well, oh. they were right. And uh, it was a very tense situation. I know uh, the, uh, there was some, quite a bit of rioting in the cities. But the south side never really got going. The west side, it did, because there were certain elements out there who were stirring things up. Uh, militant groups underground and uh, hmm. because we found that we were arresting the same people who were always being locked up anyway. You know, our usual career criminals were out there, uh, but they never got the South Side going and, and uh, it was a reaction that, uh, well, it prompted Mr. Daly, Mr. J that is, King Richard I, <laughs> to come up with his famous shoot to kill order. We said, uh, he was, you know, policemen should, you should shoot to wound looters and shoot to uh, kill arsonists. Well, two things were wrong with it. You don't shoot to wound anybody. If you're using deadly force, and this is, I have a lot of criticisms of our police department, having been the inside for years, but um, if you're using deadly force, you better be using deadly force in a situation which requires it and is, is covered by it. That is, 
where there is a chance of death or great bodily harm to yourself or someone else, and not just for um, to wing someone, to mark someone. You know, you'll uh, shoot the gun out of his hand business, you see in the in the in, the, in our uh, common uh, our, our, our popular fiction so much, or shoot his kneecap off or something like that. But that's one thing that was very well drilled into us uh, with the police in the police department. And, uh, and the, the other thing is, um, um, Mayor Daly said this after everything was over. It was already over and calmed down, going back to normal more or less. But uh, that's the only that's the two criticisms there. And uh, other than later on after the convention, he remembered said that the very famous quote they hear all the mm -hmm. time. Gentlemen, get this straight. For once and for all, the policeman's not there to create disorder. The policeman's there to preserve disorder, <laughs> and which, of course, is far more humorous uh, uh, effects to it. Okay. Well, now let's have a little bit of a kick to... We'll go around the table here first. We have a guest sitting here. We have Kevin Zal Zalit? Zaflick. Zaflick, okay. I got the F out of there. And you're from? I'm from Ridgewood High School. I'm from the station that airs this, Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM mm -hmm. Norwich at Ridgewood High School. And you are employed there? I am. I'm their media production supervisor. Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> I run their radio and TV stations, the animations on the marquee. I work with the IT department. I help students. I print their ID cards. I work in the library. In the summertime, I'm at the security desk, so I wear lots of different hats there. Okay. How, ma how many paychecks are they giving you for all of that? <laughs> Chief cook and bottle washer. There you go. Yeah, you, He's a seven I, I do a lot of that man. myself, so I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. And next on the panel, we have the ladies first, our champagne lady, our answer to Mary Hartline. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, Jack. Uh, I'm a uh, leftover, I guess they say, from WJJG, something I enjoyed tremendously, as I do now with uh, our station here. And uh, I think today we'll have an interesting uh, subject coming up. We're going to talk about the past, the future, today, and uh, just give you a little insight on... Uh, rambling and uh, possibly getting away from the seriousness of today and the inauguration and so on. And by the way, your name is? I am Jeanette Frontier. Okay. And you had, a, you had a show before on old WJJG, correct? Yes, I did. And it was? Uh, it was called The Last Frontier, and it was a, uh, you, you could talk uh, about everyday news, you could have call-ins, I had a lot of celebrities uh, that were interviewed and many, you know, very... Who did you have? So I'm just curious to know, who were some of the celebrities? Well, you as far as... Local celebrities? Yes, yeah, okay. singers, mm -hmm. uh, paranormal, gotcha, uh, okay. uh, you know, just a variety. Uh, Whoever I mean, happened to be in town at the moment or exactly whatever. Exactly, gotcha, okay. right. And I had the uh, luck of working for one of my sons in regard to his product and business. So I was out on the street a lot regarding a place and... Maybe a celebrity stayed there or shopped there. Or they had well, I'm, I'm glad that's what you're doing out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take it the wrong way. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the issue is, yes, it, it was a nice way of meeting uh, people who were coming up through the ranks and, you know, or doing something with our show business or some just one word led to another and somebody would tell them, you know, about our station. And I got a call and we'd uh, just say, you know, come in or call in and so it was uh, very, very much variety much variety rich i'm your announcer rich lang i'm a long time devotee of history i was a professional grad student in history for many years did a little teaching and tutoring and more recently i'm a student of uh, ken little who we greatly miss today ken little's history class at uh, wright college and he's more, much more than the announcer. He's a, one of the more knowledgeable people I've seen and the most articulate in expressing his questions out here. Thank you, Jack. Come from, <laughs> it's because you come from academia, right? I'm sorry? Academia? Yeah. Well, I thought you were from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Are you born from Chicago? Originally? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Northwest Cider all along, right. Oh, you live out here all your life? Mm -hmm. Except yet. when I was uh, Not yet, you have trying to get an advanced degree in school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then I was away for a while. Where were you there? When were you then? Uh, that was in the uh, 60s in the... Uh, University of Wisconsin Madison. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I've heard of that. <laughs> Big school. Next up. Mystery Challenger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi. Where am I? <laughs> How are you doing? How are you? I, I'm good. My name is Tim Little. I'm actually um the grandson of uh, Ken Little, who you're oh, yeah. just referring to. Right. Yeah, that's very, very true. Yes. So and you're gonna sit in with us today? 
Yeah, if please, you don't, please do. If, if you don't mind. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> if you don't mind. Stay. Well, what do you do? Are you a student or are you working? What are you doing? Yes, I, I'm a student at Dominican University, and um, you know, getting ready to graduate. You know, this semester. Dominican in May. University. Were you going into the priesthood, or what are you doing? <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite. Is that in River, River Forest? Yes, that is uh, in River Forest in the uh, Oak Park area. Mm -hmm. so, so is that the former Rosary College? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Indeed, it is. Yeah. What's mm -hmm. your major there? Uh, business admin. And, and finance. So are you doing okay? I'm doing all right. What year are you in? Yeah. Senior year, like I say, I'm graduating in May. So and then what? Kind of getting ready for it. Uh, and then I'm going to do their five-year program there. They have a good master's program, so I'm going to go into that. And uh, you know, hopefully, eventually get a job and an internship over the summer. You know, I have a five-year program in high school too. No, oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not out that way. No, actually, I was an honor student. Okay, so, I am too. Yes, Same Your here. Honor. No, Your Honor. No. <laughs> oh, oh. His program you get thrown out of high school for. <laughs> okay, next up, sir. Oh, um, me, I'm up. Yeah, hi. My name is Bob Trasic. I've been with uh, I've been with you guys a couple of times before uh, with this, and I do a show for WARG Radio, uh, 88.9 FM on Monday nights. I do a show called Paranormal Radioactivity. It's kind of my specialty. I deal with all... Um, Psychic phenomenon, fortune tellers, and uh, different people that have had paranormal experiences, just everybody under the sun you can think of, uh, different paranormal investigators, some names you may recognize, some you don't, some people that are well known in the field, and some not. And then also, too, we do a uh, quiz show uh, once a week, You Bet Your Life, the old time radio quiz show. We do that, and we're having a lot of fun with that right now. And uh, that's it. Somewhat of an amateur historian, uh, particularly White House history. I do lectures on the White House. White House history, Titanic is a specialty subject of mine things like that, and then run some tours and things, too, for people. Now, WARG radio means what? W-A-R-G. Well, WARG, Argo is the last. I don't know what the W is. What the is Argo just radio. Ar Argo corn products. No, Argo corn starch. Oh, but you, you come from the factory? No. Where from? No, I come from Summit. No, I mean, where, where's but the... Argo High School. Argo High School. Argo High School. Yes, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah W-A-R-G is Argo and, High School, yeah. And that's in Summit, Illinois. Summit, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Right here. It used to be it was also called Argo. Was it, a, was it a company town at one time, too? Or something? Mm -hmm. Summit Argo, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, if you say Argo, if you say Summit, whatever, mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing, yeah. Yeah, one side, of, one, one side of the tracks was Summit, one side of the tracks was Argo. Mm -hmm. If you address the letter to Argo, it'll get there. If you address the letter to Summit, it'll get there. If you address the letter to Summit, Argo, it'll get there. And then the new state is now called, not Illinois anymore, it's Madaganistan. Oh, he wants to get political right away. Madigan. John Casserole. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. okay, now you said that you didn't know what the W stand for, right? No, what is the W? Okay, that means any radio station this side of the Mississippi begins with a W. Oh. Like WGN, WRHS, uh, WJJG. What are they on the other side of the Mississippi? K, okay, they start with ah, K. Okay. Like in Albuquerque, New Mexico, KGGM. Oh, I didn't or, see uh, how you learn something every yeah, day. Yeah, see how they say up in, up in Colorado, uh, KOAT and uh, K, uh, KVER. And, so and I so think all Canada's C and I think X is Mexico. Is X That's or Z right. Mexico? I think X is Mexico. Huh. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah. See, now they say you learn something every day, and yeah. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, W, uh, the Tribune owns a KWGN in, in uh, Colorado, in uh, Denver. Mm -hmm. yeah. KWGN. So oh, okay. So it's WGN, but it's KWGN. Yeah. Because yeah. it's on the other side of the Mississippi River. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, Thank and, you for uh, that. The initials always had a, a meaning like WLS, World's Largest World Stage. Yeah. World yeah. Store. Or a lot of times it was a sponsor was or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sears, uh -huh. you yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Like Warren. Uh, yeah. WGN, World's Greatest Nation, or, World's you know, newspaper. Newspaper. Yeah, yeah. newspaper. Uh, it changes over yeah. time, but, you know, uh, we just think of w letters. WBKB, Balaban and Cats Broadcasting, mm -hmm. that was. There you are. For the theater chain. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I've heard over the years. Yeah, that's where. Mm hmm. Balaban yeah. Cats, yeah. So, anyway, this is loosening up a little bit. Now, before we get into our, on the agenda, which is that life in Chicago, I'm going to talk about a few things that happened around town lately. Uh, now, in, in sports. Bears have a new coach. Oh. Anybody mm -hmm. have any thoughts on that? or No? Sports, no. Mm -hmm. The last uh, thing I heard, and boy, that for me to even be talking about sports is not my uh, forte, but here uh, they were discussing that if, you, if you're if you waiting for like a Mike, Mike Ditka or Lovey Smith or mm -hmm. so on, uh, don't take the man for his appearance. Uh, he has a tendency to look a little scholarly and, and uh, you know, he's straightforward and all that. But they do say that when he gets org is organized and what he wants to do, he sets that standard, yeah. and it usually takes. Yes. But most of them did say they know very little about him. So I, do, 
I don't say that he doesn't have history, but as uh, people to people, mm -hmm. the uh, people have said that. Well, that apparently, he has a record. I mean, he yeah, he was definitely. Uh, five years coach of the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian League, mm -hmm. and for three of those years, he went to their Grey Cup the game, which is their Super Bowl, and won two of those mm -hmm. with his team. So. Must be doing something yeah, right. Yes, statistically, I have nothing to yeah. say about him. I know I don't well, know it. Probably what they're telling you is he's a lawyer also. But we won't hold that against him, right? Well, I don't know that. Is that so? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know anything about this man. Okay. It's just that they're judging him just by looking at him. And that's Isn't that what really most people do? Don't we, most people make well, first impressions you know. by what that's you look like. That's how we get yeah. our president. Yeah, can't help, you know. Yeah. When the first bullet point came out, they said he's from CFL. Everyone's like, oh, he's from AM1000. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. See what I mean? You know, we mm -hmm. just stay in our yeah. category. But that's what I heard. Well, the things <laughs> he's done, uh, he was a quarterback coach for several people, including, I believe it was uh, San Francisco 49ers when they were about to give up on, uh, what's his name, Young? What's his name? Guy's name left-hander. Oh, I know it just until I tried to say it. Steve Young. Okay. He was uh, out of came out of uh, Brigham Young, and uh, he, as we know, he had a much better career after that. So, and that seems to be where we got to start here. With mm -hmm. Quarterbacks. The Bears being a team that's had like 30 or 40 quarterbacks, and this time when another team might have had three, went through so many, and that's not exaggerating either. So, anyway, and what about? What about this business about uh, Manti mm. Teo and Notre Dame mm, and this what about bizarre it? story? And does anybody have any ideas about that? Or? Right now, the last advertisement was Katie Kirk was able to get him as a guest. And I understand it'll be a couple days down. She has an afternoon show. And he's supposed to tell the real truth. Oh. But he hasn't been denying that he did not know this person, I mean, you know, he never supposedly met her. And, and maybe to bring you all up to date, uh, Notre Dame's games and fundraisers and all things, let's say if he had a touchdown or that, was directed toward him in honor of the fact that on the same day, a few weeks yeah. back or a month back, his grandmother passed away and his girlfriend. And the end result is... Uh, they gave him a lot of tribute and monies was pouring in and gifts were pouring in and, and he went along with that story to find out that he's been dealing with somebody over the internet. Is uh, that it, Jack? Something like that. He never met her. But he never he met, met the her. girl. Well, the he, said. he never got to her funeral. Mm -hmm. He never got... And to find out that that's a hoax. Mm -hmm. His grandmother did die, mm -hmm. but he had, he... This girlfriend is nowhere in his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and yeah. It, it absolutely she doesn't exist. So. And now, now the claim is that some cousin mm -hmm. uh, fooled him into this whole thing. And so I don't know. Well, it, it's I'm, so unbelievable. Uh, either I'm a fraud or I'm pretty damn gullible. Which way, which is, would you rather be? I think I'd rather be the fraud than being gullible. Yeah, but yeah, well, it's a pretty hard choice. Anybody have any ideas on that? Or? Think we'll ever know the real st whole story, or no, 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 no. well, between him and Lance Arm Armstrong, hmm. aren't we just being bombarded by with the the word con artists and liars, and it's not a good um, mm. role model, is it, for no. anyone, and and uh, even to be a part of the conversation of it, yeah. we should just let them go to the wayside and. Now, and, if uh, you're a professional organization, you had, do you want to take a chance with something like this? Oh, or that's what I'm saying. Something later on going to happen, or can you, mm -hmm. can you count on the guy to... So it didn't help him out either as far as professional years go. It just, uh, it, to me, it's just... Uh, 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 we have enough problems in the world. Do we yeah. need to have more mm -hmm. with this kind of celebrity? Manuf and manufactured and nonsense. Right, now, right. Now, if you listen to the Don of Sports, which will be aired... Uh, Wednesday morning on WRHS, uh, Don Figarelli, who did the show here uh, last last week, he talked in depth about this Lance Armstrong. That was one of the major subjects of his of his program, and uh, he was I mean he was just uh, you know talking about what this guy has all done, and he should be ashamed of himself for, for what he did. So that'll be aired uh, this coming Wednesday, 7:30 on 89.7. 7:30 a.m. 
Yeah, so that already happened when you're listening to this on WRHS, but you can listen to it anytime on WindyCityHometown.com. Is that mm-hmm. right, John? That's right, yeah. There you go. Once you get this one on there. Mm-hmm. But you'll be on one. one the Donna week. Sports will have already aired on Wednesday, January 23rd. Mm-hmm. And this is airing after that, so. Some, you know, okay. The 28th. All right. I don't even pick it all up, so. Mm-hmm. You know what I think is so sad about stories like this, and it did happen through Armstrong, uh, that when I have done something wrong and my fellow teammates are also always around me and we're, we're, we're a little, you know, we are a team. We're, we live together, we sleep together, we travel together, and that I could walk up to you and tell you you didn't see me do it. You didn't hear me do it. You and and they in turn were also doing this doping and so on that he was doing, and he made their lives so miserable and ruined that wonderful sport of bicycling, which isn't something that was really popular. And uh, he destroyed the whole image. He destroyed their lives. And to this moment, I guess they still feel he did not tell it all. And he claimed that was why he had that interview, to tell it all. Well, mm-hmm. what's bad about that is cycling is not quite so big here in the United States as it is but worldwide. In Europe, but in Europe, it's going to put like a black mark on the United mm-hmm. States. And anyone from the United mm-hmm. States will be like, oh, we know what happened here before. So I think it's going to hurt the sport. Yeah, more. and we are having a problem ge- in general now. Europe is not. Th- we don't. We are not their favorites no. anymore, yeah, as they them. say. Yeah. And now we don't need another black mark about that, you know. Uh, and I'm just talking as a the lay person who, the way I would have raised my family or what I would have accepted through my friendships. And uh, We all have a white lie or a little mm-hmm. exaggerated story, but to, to, you know, go against your fellow... Yeah, I, I used to tell people I was anorexic, but they didn't believe me. Uh-huh. <laughs> we do have our communi- comedian with us, don't we? <laughs> well, well, what do you say? Yeah. Well, you wonder about psychology. If a person lies for so many years, I think there's a point at which they, they have it. rationalized it so much they can't distinguish the lie yeah, from the truth right. anymore. I think that's often the case. That's right. The white lie... It becomes exaggerated. It's mm-hmm. a white lie multiplied a hundredfold. And they can't. And you lose break, what's the truth is. They can't break away from it. Because... That's a logical liar? Is that what that is? I think that's so. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they actually, you know, if you, you know, there are people that are such good liars. If you see something happening and he denies it, you say, gee, did I see right? He's so mm-hmm. good at it. You know? mm-hmm. 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 Work with people. With, well, I might work with people on the job where they claim this and claim. I know they're lying. No. But I don't know why they have to. I don't know why they do this. I'm not, I'm no psychiatrist or whatever. Oh, certainly. It has Making to themselves look better. Insert, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, insecure. Exactly. I mean, there's something about yeah. that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but anyway, uh, so are we going to well, possibly talk about a long we're, time we're, ago? Or? We're, we're getting there. We're going to need a little warm-up <laughs> there. We get all the current situations uh, all right. warming everything up. Does everybody feel warm? Very comfortable. Feel nice warm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, feels Very good. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Put another log on the fire there. Yes, ma'am. You want to have something for us? No, I'm just saying, are we getting... Yes. To where we yes. intended to go. <laughs> okay. Life in Chicago, as it was. How far back do you want to go? <laughs> uh, how about to the uh, Mesozoic? Want to go back to the Indian days? Yeah, we can do that. Right. Mesozoic here. The glaciers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the glacial, alluvial deposits. Lake Chicago. Yeah. Um, Chicago. Well, we start as one of the we can remember uh, as, younger, as young kids, as, as we grow up. Things that were traditions. Oh, I can uh, remember being in my mother's womb. (laughs) Excellent. Well, uh, I can can remember (laughs) way at the beginning. I can remember. Were you impatient to leave, (laughs) though? Who's a supposedly Salvador Dali can remember being born or something like that, or could remember (laughs) claim to be? So, um, no. Well, you go back to things that were okay. Let's go to like the era immediately before and around and after World War II. So, a big change in the world. World War II uh, was never the same again. And yet you still had you know, things like uh, days when kids would go outdoors at night and play games like uh, uh, b- b- Blind Man's Bluff, uh, <laughs> uh, what was the other one, Hide and Seek. Kick Red, the Can. Kick the Can. Ghost Red, in the Graveyard. Red Rover, Red Rover. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Mother May I? What else do we have? Every, every game was made up. I mean, you didn't yeah. have you didn't yeah. have to own even a bat and a ball. You you could use a stick. You could yeah. mm-hmm. you could use covers of the sewers for bases. So, so, so uh, these were oral traditions, as they might call them. Mm-hmm. There was nothing written down, but kids mm-hmm. passed it on one to the next. You guys remember any of those? You we weren't extravagant. You guys is pretty young there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not you, Bob. No, I remember. I remember some of them. I don't remember all of that. <laughs> well, World War Two had a hopeless feeling because we saw so many of the men going to war, and we saw so many that we lost, too. Mm-hmm. And what the war did in general, let it be Europe, let it be here, uh, we just, that would made us come out of rationing. Things were rationed. You couldn't get gum. You couldn't get school paper. Sugar, cloth, you couldn't get yes, ra- mean, Right. Yeah. You could get very little meat. You had to have food st- uh, stamps to buy shoes. You could get a... Play you know, tokens shoe and you a, had to. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. gas was rationed, and uh, uh, and everybody being cooperative, you didn't go. Oh, was that a hardship? But it was different. And, uh, and when everybody's in the same boat, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Exactly. So your neighbors like are no say, better off than you, you are. You never so. knew you were yeah. poor. Yeah, exactly. You know, that yeah. old line, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but the last war we in where there were no doubts about the war, it was the last good war. We had a common enemy, and there was total unanimity. We knew what that. we were fighting for. Yeah. Right. We knew what we were From fighting Korea for. From Korea and Vietnam, we've had very divisive wars in this country. Right. Things right. change. Um, the world wars seem to have a very profound effect on life and society in general. Uh, everything happened after the First World War. Things changed. Uh, the Edwardian era was over. That was done. Uh, that was over with. The Victorian era was a thing of the past. Uh, things changed with the First World War. And then they tried to go back to normal. And then, of course, the 1920s and the 30s and then the 40s, World War II changed everything again, uh, big time. Uh, mm-hmm. Things never, after those kind of wars like that, things never go back to what they were. You, you so there wasn't even a term, return to yeah. normalcy, correct? After yeah. World War One. Right. Warren G. Harding's yeah. line. And, and yeah, then yeah. on top of it, they went and vo- the boys are over in, in Europe and they come back and the country's been voted dry. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Dry Prohibition. Prohibition, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, mm-hmm. Whatever they were thinking about with that. You ever seen the, any of the series on that, you guys? Yes. Yeah, they've had a rerun on excellent. Channel 11 the last Ken couple Burns. of weeks. Ken Burns. Ken a series about two years yeah. ago. Was he, was he doing a Prohibition yeah. series? Ken oh, Prohibition. oh, really? really? I know that. Fascinating. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talking about World War II from a different angle, just when it went through and started, uh, we think of it as 41 because of the bomb being dropped, but, it, you know, 38 and 39 was leading to it. That was heavy depression. Sure. You know, you were poor, yeah. and now it was the war. So what happened after World War II or the ending is people started getting hope because everything was needed. Mm-hmm. Everything was used up. And so anyone who went back to a job, you know, they, they started earning better money. It was a, it was probably 20 years of the best accomplishment mm-hmm. in your life. You could buy a home. The, uh, the VA started mortgage programs. And, uh, there, you know, you could see that your dollar was working. Sure, and then new things in everybody's future too. TV everybody was coming had to in. Buy a car, and, right, right, everybody right. had a car. People before yeah. didn't have them. So, you know, yeah, things were, we didn't have TV yeah. as kids mm-hmm. or yeah. anything. You know? So there was that opposite. It was a tragic story, but it gave everybody hope. Now, you just mentioned depression. Mm-hmm. That seems to be a word Noel used today. We have all of these recessions, no matter how long yeah. they last. Is it is it possible we're actually in a depression now and we're not admitting it? Or what, you know what the difference is, maybe? I think they're what afraid to question? use the word. I think they're afraid to I use agree. the word. I agree. I think they are. It, but just a question of degree, I think. The, the line between a recession and a depression. Mm-hmm. You're just tiny, Which, tiny. of course, cleaned yeah. everybody out right. financially. Yeah, I was going to say, I think the difference between a yeah, recession there and was a depression a is a recession is sort of like an economic downfall. A depression mm-hmm. is an economic crash mm-hmm. where everything mm-hmm. just hits the bottom and it's done. Mm-hmm. that actual yeah. deflation during yeah. the depression. Rather they, than they're than saying now we have double-digit recession. Which, double what, that, dip what is that? Yeah, what the heck is that? Well, I mean, there you go. Yeah. See, the double they, dip, yeah. I don't think they want to go near yeah. the word depression. Or inflation, double-digit could. inflation. I mean, I, you know. Yeah. How about stagflation they were using? That's <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But no matter what, like now people are losing their homes and foreclosure net. We didn't have that. If you, if you, you know, they, if they lost something, they did lose it. But it wasn't everybody on the block. Or uh, uh, I think some of our problem is we have reached too high of a debt in our own home. Yeah. Much less we're blaming Washington. You know, I think we 
we had we had a choice now of us losing everything or that or the country losing everything or that before that in depression nobody had much and the little they lost really made them poor are we, are we going to give time for got a minute? A little less than a minute. Less than a minute. Talk. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. What can we do in less than a minute? <laughs> so that was my point. In, yeah. In well, we get, we're going to be going for a break uh, pretty soon here, so we're going to try and pick this up right afterward. So we have to hold this thought. And I want to remind you that you folks are listening to the Windy City Hometown r Radio Network. You've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. We'll be right back. How are the tires on your vehicle? Do you need motor oil or transmission fluid? Or power steering fluid? Or antifreeze? What about the wiper blades? Are they in good sharp condition? Is the washer fluid in your tank full? How good is your battery? Do you need to replace light bulbs? Well, the place to pick up all these items is at Berkeley Auto Supply at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley. Stop in and see Tom and he will help you get any part or supplies you might need for your vehicle. Tom at Berkeley Auto Supply has everything you need for your vehicle. Has every tool, parts and supplies you might need from the top of your roof to the bottom of your chassis and from the front of your bumper to the rear of your bumper. You can call Tom at 708-544-8350 and they are located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley. Tom's hours are Monday to Friday 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturdays 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Sundays 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's Berkeley Auto Supply at 5237 St. Charles just east of Wolf Road and west of Mannheim Road, about two miles. Call 708-544-8350 for parts, tools, and supplies. It's Berkeley Auto Supply, 708-544-8350. Now, back to our discussion. Jack? Hey, now. <laughs> that was a fast break there. Yeah, it was a, wasn't that a quickie? Well, that was really a quickie. A quickie to end all quickies. <laughs> so anyway, what were we were talking about, um, oh, even the nomenclature and the words were different, some things you never heard before. Well, they say that mm. the language is constantly changing. Would anyone, uh, uh, Jeanette, did you know of any words we you don't know, hear Jack, anymore? This is uh, so odd. It's certainly words we probably hear now and then. But they were uh, in our language on a daily basis, basis, let it be clothing or anything. And uh, what uh, brought this uh, little moment uh, back to me was uh, uh, there was something going on with uh, another radio station, and, and the par uh, they were reminiscing, too. And, and the fellow said, uh, my mom used to always say, go get my pocketbook. And uh, I said, well, isn't that a nice idea for how many words in my time did we use for the same hmm. product of today but with a different uh, a different sound so here's what I wanted to say uh, I, evidently as I said I picked up on his word pocketbook and of course that does mean purse but you never hear anyone say Get me my pocketbook. I still uh, hear it once in a while. Do you? Yeah. Well, all right, Kevin. You know, I'm just saying, in my mind, I was saying, I haven't heard that for ages, and my own mother used to say that. Get it, and it was always, well, we didn't have all these varieties of colors and, oh. and all these so-called sharp things. As uh, but, Jeanette, today. wouldn't a pocketbook imply more of a small purse? Well, you know what? Uh, like a clutch or something? Uh, it yeah. could be in no. a change purse. But but, but it's right. still you still knew you were going to get a purse, yep. and that's why I brought it up, you know. And then of course us girls we would wear a scarf on a day like today, but in our time we used to call it a babushka, babushka. and that was a, a Polish translation. Polish. Polish. There you go. Hmm. And uh, our gyms, our gym shoes were tennis shoes. They were not gym no, shoes. Right. You mm -hmm. never heard mm -hmm. anybody 
go for anything but tennis shoes. How about sneakers? We never had sneakers. Yes, sneakers I, yeah. finally came in, but mm -hmm. we were always getting gym shoes. What, what was it? These sneakers, that kind of candy bar? Sneakers <laughs> with the nuts, yeah. <laughs> Back to the babushka. <laughs> yeah. Did you call it a rain bonnet when it was raining, like the plastic ones? You'd uh, at the yes, supermarket? a rain bonnet, but that was not that stuff. I don't know what I call yeah. it. Yes. Uh -huh. But a babushka always implies something worn over the head, whereas a scarf you often think of just around the neck and collar. Yeah, but you know, yeah. you put on, you put a knot under here, and and that you put that's, it over. That's you a know. babushka. Yeah, yeah right. babushka, and uh, th uh, that rain hat. Uh, I think that started coming in when the plastic products came in, and uh, something for water, you know, protection like that. Uh, so you are right, and we never. Put gloves on. We put mittens on. Everything was a mitten. I don't care if it was even if it had, the even finger if it had yeah. fingers. You said, "Where's my mitten?" Well, what about when ladies got dressed up and they wore well, gloves? That was a gloves. Those had to be gloves. That was, yeah. See, that was the distinction. Yeah. yeah once upon a time, a, la a lady never left never, the house without gloves and a hat. Never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never. You were always buying a new pair of white gloves. Yeah. In fact, that meant you're going to the loop. You're going yeah, somewhere fine, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, and and women weren't made up throughout the day, so if they, you know, if your child saw you putting lipstick on, they almost panicked because mm -hmm. that meant Ma was going out. You <laughs> In know. general, nobody dresses up anymore. Yeah, you, we talk about how sad. people go to church now. I think it's yeah. sad. Yeah, yeah, I, I really yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, of course, we always had bicycle, but it was always quick a bike. Okay. It was not a bicycle, you know. Um, your neighbor was always Mr. or Mrs. somebody. You know, it, you never said Annie or Fred or... And never. you knew your neighbors. You knew, because you and, lived together and you for knew years. them, and they yeah. knew you, right, and they could correct you, and they could, yeah. uh, you know... But leave. a child would never oh. call the neighbor by the first name. No, no, no. And, of course, naturally we all had stores, but we used to be very specific. The butcher shop, mm -hmm. the candy store, the ice cream parlor. And now we just are going to the store. We don't ever know what store it is, and that's what goes on now. Uh, you went to the show, but you you didn't say you were going to the show. You're always going to the movies. You didn't mm -hmm. you usually use that word you too much. You didn't go to the picture show, or is that before no, you No, uh, old-fashioned. It probably oh, okay. was my time, but we used that. That term. Some things could um, be also like uh, regional too. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, but you hot. went to the movies. You mm -hmm. know, you, everybody knew, mm -hmm. and nobody even said well, what. What was the name of the show? The uh, the actual show, like a, a, a Tiffin or. Well, that's because you only had yeah. one in town. So. Well, I mean, my point is, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, and every neighborhood had a uh, uh, their own little show. You know, the dime, the one you got in for a dime, you know. With a sweet shop next door. There always, the always, shop. always, yeah. always. Mm -hmm. uh, the malt shop. Fountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No. Um, your winter wardrobe was an immediate long underwear and snow pants. Did you ever hear those two was phrases? Snow? Snow pants. You, they automatically mm -hmm. were the same color as your coat and you bought them as a set, mm -hmm. you know. Now, possibly not every home. But in general, those were the uh, phrases I never heard. How about hear. leggings? They call them leggings. Leggings, yeah. too. Yes, that's we'll go another. Go back far enough, you yeah. guys were wearing knickers. Oh, no, well, I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The men's pants were long pants, mm. short pants, or knickers. Knickers, yeah. So mm. you didn't say slacks. You didn't say... Uh, Trousers. You know, and naturally, yeah. you used the, the other words. But in a term of talking to each other... Everybody knew what you were talking about, you know. Same with a woman. It was a house dress, a sundress, or a dressy dress. Hmm. You know, you never gave it a reasoning like a dancing dress or, a, you know, there was a very unique uniform that we seemed to all uh, use. Um, our snow boots were called galoshes, and they were either buttoned or zippered. You know, everybody knew where their galoshes oh, were. Those clamps that the guys uh, would wear yeah, with the galoshes. Yeah, that you know. little clamp. Yeah. You are right. You, know. uh, you never said, where's the camera? You said, where's the brownie? Where's the Kodak? Hmm. Uh, cigarettes or cigars was a smoke. I'm going to go buy a smoke. Nobody ever questioned, was it going to be a cigar? Hmm. You knew you, what you were going to buy, hmm. but you still called it a, sm a smoke. Um you went to a play, 
but you didn't say that. You said you went to a stage show. Yeah. And uh, a singer was always a crooner. Uh, an orchestra was you. That meant it was the big band. It was not not a three piece or two. Band piece. It was a orchestra. big band, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you went to a wake, but we used to say we we went to see someone laid out. Mm-hmm. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, with laid them? out. You can still hear that one. Yeah, yeah. but I mean it. I'm saying at this point, I'm not hearing these yeah. words mm-hmm. in well, dominant. I think the funeral home industry really has changed, like from coffin yes. to casket. They make it mm-hmm. sound a little bit nicer. And right. Yes, a much yeah. more acceptable. In right. many wakes in the old days, seem to go two days, mm-hmm. not yeah. just two a single three, day. Three, three, sometimes, four, yeah, three, three, sometimes, three. yeah. Especially well, if it was held at home. You could have it at, at home. And they had it at home. Yeah. Uh-huh. Through the 20s, let's say. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, in your front uh-huh. room. Yeah. That's why they call it a funeral parlor. There you are. Yeah. A nun was always considered a sister, and a priest was a father, depending on your religion. And um, we didn't use the word Walgreens or that, because there really probably weren't any in my time. But you, everybody knew the word drugstore. Mm-hmm. It, no matter who owned it, it was still a drugstore, and that was that way. An empty lot was a prairie. Right. It's a very that, Chicago, that's a very Chicago area. Mm-hmm. Area. Yeah. Like a gangway. Mm-hmm. And they said the prairie right. state is the place to picture the empty lot with the crisscross paths on it and the bricks laying mm-hmm. here and there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the weeds. <laughs> uh, drugs were uh, cons- just called medicine. It wasn't uh, how the way we interpret it now either. Uh, liquor was hooch. At least it was in, <laughs> in, my, <laughs> in my era. And... Uh, uh, well, of course, the slang of Chicago was dis, dat, and do, doze, and ain't. Those are four words that and were... And tree them. Who, and tree them, <laughs> yes. Anything who talked that way? <laughs> <laughs> and on the topic of stores, who says dime store at Dimes, store? there That's you what go. I was thinking of, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a, Some said five and dime, but most of us said dime me, store. Yes. Kresge's or Wolver's and very There nice you news. are. The Grants, dime store. Grant's, but, uh, Jupiter. Yeah. But as I went through all of these words, you know, maybe not overly interesting as much as you can see how each so many generations come up with their own slang, Mm -hmm. yet it still means the same thing, you know. But to actually hear it day in, day Mm -hmm. out, I don't hear it anymore. On the topic of dime stores, everybody had a Woolworths in their neighborhood and a Walgreens Mm -hmm. and uh, Kresge's. Kresge. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. They also Kresge had something in there Kmart. that they never mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah, Kmart's the Kmart evolved the out of Kresge's. Thing, thing, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Which Sears owns them now. So. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so Kmart owns Sears. It's the other way around. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. 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 So anyway, <laughs> uh, they also had something in the Walgreens and Woolworths they haven't had for years. There's a little lunch counter. A very yes. nice Yes. Usually mm-hmm. very good. Say, very good. Or, uh, snack bar. Yeah. 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 Well, they were big at lunchtime. And I know Tom McKenna, who's not here today, one of our regular panel members. His mother, for years, managed the Woolworths at 63rd and Ashland. Oh. So kids would go in and at lunchtime from our school, and uh, time usually ate lunch there with the mother. But, uh, if she, they had a wrong order, one of the kids would be the recipient mm-hmm. of the one that went wrong. So, But that was, it wasn't friendly. It was clean. Sure. I'm thinking maybe that Fast service, yeah. too, there's too much licensing involved now or something. Sure, and not only that, public. you know, once our malls and all that came in, you know, yeah. the little guy went, but... In your neighborhoods, are you at 63rd and Pulaski? Mm-hmm. Now, see, on the north side, you say 63rd and Crawford if it was over here. Mm-hmm. In your side, it's Pulaski. Yeah. Uh, well, there the is one on Pulaski there, right around the corner oh, on, on, on 63rd. What is that? Uh, I can't think of the name, but it, okay. it's that connotation. And, of course, they so close. They sold so, oh, yeah. uh, so okay. birds. 63rd, you know. Did you say 63rd and Pulaski? Mm-hmm. I was just going to say that. Uh, you know, you, M&R variety or something. There you are. It's like a throwback. It's an old dime store. Mm-hmm. Huh. The, the wood in the floor the way it is, all mm-hmm. the aisles. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were saying that. You have yes. the drugstore with the big Indian on the top. That's, yeah, that, and, was, well, the, the, that was a tobacco. Oh, tobacco. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. The one yeah. that made it into Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they showed it? But, uh, yeah. Okay. But this is, I swear, I told them it was in there. But I thought it was unique. Yeah, you belong in wild Chicago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they said they've talked about it before. And it's still there. It's like, a, it's like mm-hmm. 6315 South Pulaski. 
And you could, I mean, you know, what they were for is you could get a little of everything, you know, a needle You could always find thread. something I mean, at the dime store you couldn't find anywhere else. Oh, yes, <laughs> and and good quality, yeah. you know what I mean? We got our rubber balls in there for fast pitching, <laughs> just to play that as a game. We get the uh, model airplanes, uh, little books, uh, whatever. Anything, <clears throat> and, and also what impressed me about it was it still had the original wooden floors. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the they all the metal. Oh, definitely. Metal. The tin or metal you know, ceilings. Yeah. Square, yeah. Yeah, somehow, with the um, which used fans. to be in our homes yeah. too. You know, we had them in our homes too. The same. Casa Blanca style fan. Mm -hmm. They call them. Though. Yeah. Yeah, but you know that was uh, that was part of the era. And you, you know? mentioned the Walgreens restaurant counters. Didn't they spin off for a while and they were separate places? Wags. 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 They were wags. 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 I'm surprised yeah. they went. They were pretty good for a while. So Kevin, you're as up to date as. <laughs> At Baker Square, they were popping fresh then. What's the name of the company bought them out? Oh, Vicor, maybe? Bought out by, um, Baker Square was popping fresh pies. Correct. Yeah. Baker Square. No, this was that was long ago. Hmm. No. Shoney's. 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 That's, right. That's right. Remember no. Shoney's? You see a lot of uh -huh. highways elsewhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. That used to be yeah. south. Yeah, but here, Shoney's bought them. They didn't last very long. Uh -huh. No. They didn't, it didn't, wasn't as close enough to the other Well, like our donut. What was that? Krispy yeah. Kreme. Krispy yeah. Kreme. Yeah. But that whole, the whole chain kind of folded up a lot. Yeah. I mean, they're still yeah. probably a little popular in the South, but, yeah, you, they, they were I mean, printing money for a while until the, the they opened, diet started. There, we had uh, oh, yeah. policemen on horses but was it like a guarding again? the lines. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. just, well, you know, remember? Like, I live close then, too. Before, two weeks before, cars are driving up into the lot. Are they open yet, you know? And yeah. they never have any advertising. It all goes through news. Mm -hmm. So I think they're still popular in the East. Uh, New York, Washington, D.C. area. The South, area. Think, too. Yeah, yeah the South I think they young. came out of Tennessee. Well, it was Elvis's favorite. And uh, I was just going to say, Elvis Presley really he did a job. Of he, had a different, he had a different donut company. He did a commercial for a donut company like in the 50s. Did he? Yeah. Hmm. No, I, I don't know that up. one. Yeah, I don't know that. Another one. type of store that's just Winchester about vanished now is the uh, stationery or office supply yes, store. Oh, Remember, yeah. you'd go downtown, every block would have a hoarders. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hoarder from hoarders. Uh -huh. Most neighborhoods would have a stationery store. They're just about gone now. Thanks yeah. to the internet and the uh, computer. There were pen stores, too. There were stores that sold pens and nothing but sure. pens. Right. Parker and, yeah. and all those things. You generally call them stationary stores. Well, you've got like staples. Typewriter ribbons. Yeah. Who buys typewriter ribbons anymore? Try what? to find a typewriter. That's there right. You, you got yeah. the uh, keyboard now, which is great. You got the you keyboard. I did it. Mm -hmm. Spell check. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Spell check. <laughs> so no more dictionaries. You know, yeah. Really. It's so things are totally so different. very different. Mm -hmm. And, and I say I have nothing against the malls, but I think they've trampled over all that little neighborhood stuff, you know. It's, uh, it was well, there's a uniformity now. You go coast to coast, the same stores, the same looking malls. There's, mm -hmm. uh, other than small town America, you're getting a, mm -hmm. no, too much, much of a uniformity. No distinctiveness it's anymore. Not right. There's no small town right. feel anymore at any of these no. stores, little, sadly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you do run into occasional places like that, uh, but of course this is by design. That's what, like, what, what McDonald's went over so well. And Ray Kroc started that. He, oh, they yeah. knew that people were now with the interstate travel. He wanted somewhere they would recognize when they were mm -hmm. away from, you know, Illinois and they were in New Mexico or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, McDonald's. They Keep know what they're the going to get. Same colors, and same you could eat fast. Design. Right, you could hit the road in 15 minutes. But you know what the yeah. menu was yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you know, in in respect to small businesses, uh, the only the where they, where they thrived is. Every neighborhood, every neighborhood, I don't care if it was eight miles wide and two miles the other mm -hmm. way, you had your own butcher shop, mm -hmm. your own bakery, yep. your own drugstore, your own show. Uh, you know, everything, you just went up and down the blocks, your own bank. I mean, and see, now mm -hmm. it's... Uh, all branched out and you didn't used to say what neighborhood you were from what parish you were from oh, that was very common you always said what no. parish especially on the you're south Catholic, side of course yeah yeah, yeah. Well, even a lot of the other people do the same yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah true. Mm -hmm. that's true like um uh like in our parish saint theodore parish was like about, about a half mile square just about i kind of you know, there was about 11 different churches in that area three catholic mm -hmm. churches the parish the regular parish and you had a croatian church was just about yeah there was north always north. enough and the south right on marquette road was saint mary monk carmel Italian, was mm -hmm. Italians from everywhere. Not that you couldn't go there if you're an Italian. And like they had like two Lutheran churches, tr Christian, Christian Science, uh, a uh, Holiness, which is like um, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. and um, Methodist, mm -hmm. Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, I can't this mm -hmm. one But it was like everywhere. You couldn't walk for a couple of blocks. One time they were all right next to each other. The Methodist church was right across from the, uh, uh, the uh, Christian Science. 
So. Do you remember when you would ask your friendships, uh, which today would never work, are you public or Catholic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just such a dominant mm-hmm. subject, mm-hmm. Uh, and it didn't mean anything to Schools, us. Schools, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it just yeah. didn't mean a thing. It mm-hmm. just meant, which one do you go to? And it was the end of that, you know, mm-hmm. where we weren't picking on you. or. No, we got on earlier from the Catholic schools, usually. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the kids, that went, we went to St. Theo, the kids who went to O'Toole early would say, well, we get a better education. <laughs> but then, well. when they were on cleanup week, they'd be driving around, sucker, sucker. <laughs> We had, we had Holy Week, they had Cleanup Week. Uh-huh. Cleanup Week, what do they call now? Spring, Spring vacation? Break. Yeah. yeah. That's where you go down to Florida and all that and yeah. get bombed? Yeah. I mean, it was uh, just an exactly. unusual way to <laughs> distinguish things that had no other meaning. It wasn't mm-hmm. malicious or anything else. You just know? to be sure, uh, a lot of the Protestants, while the adults were in church, they would have Sunday school. Uh-huh. Did the Catholics call it the same? Catechism. Yeah, they called it catechism. Yeah, oh, okay. Or at least the R- yeah. R- R- CIA in or something. Well, right. For, yeah, there's something new now. Adults, I think. Mm-hmm. Is the R- CIA is for no, adults. I think so. That if you want to convert to the religion, they have those classes still. Or if you didn't okay. finish all your sacraments. And also, the kids yeah. who are going to like burn go to yeah. Sunday and come down there. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But our catechism was on Indicure. a Saturday. Like really? it never interfered with okay. the masses. Well, I can remember. We had to be at a certain mass. Yeah. But let's say when uh, Catholic adults would go to service on Sunday morning, they had no real good place to put their youngsters while they were at church. Uh, no, that's, take we with didn't have, yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't do that. We were right with oh, yeah. okay. So that's a good distinction right there. Yeah. Yeah. Some, Some of them crying rooms. Catholics, Some right, churches had right. crying rooms, but for like little uh-huh. kids, but not all of them did. And even gotcha. that happened later. You know, it was almost like a new new idea. Yeah. No, I remember as a kid, we no, never had that. We just sat right there with our parents. Right. And you better, and you and better you, sit there, too. I was just going to say, <laughs> you better. Well, now they, they kind of jump around and they yeah. kind of go yeah. home. And, you know, I yeah. can remember as a little guy, it could have been more than four or five, bouncing on the kneeler because it makes a good horse. I said, uh-huh. And then my dad's, whoosh. Yeah. And then oh, St. Cecilia's was like around 45th and Wells or that way, around Fuller Park. It, it was styled after St. Peter's or the Capitol at the Dome. Uh-huh. So I discovered you look up and you go, <laughs> you hear the echo. <laughs> well, I could, I could, I believe that, yeah. <laughs> I could make the sound like the baseball bat, young. Know? But I don't we, think any Catholics had to sit through a 45-minute service on Sunday mornings. Mm-hmm. Things, I think, moved a little more quickly. Yeah. Otherwise, you, it would be intolerable for young kids in the uh, Well, it might sanctuary. be about that long, but a sermon, 45 minutes. Excessively long, excessively long sermons. Someone said no one is, no souls are saved after nine minutes or something like that. <laughs> so, cut, you know, by the way, the I, I think many Protestant ministers were paid by the word. <laughs> I think it was John Calvin that started the idea of a sermon, too, which now they call a homily in our church. Homily. Yeah. yeah that's that's the that stuff you had with eggs down south. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. those were some of the... Uh, where are we going now? Hmm. We always had in, More in, in Summit and Argo, I'm just uh, talking about the funeral parlors, you got me thinking about it. We, all, yeah. we had three, and now Summit and Argo, where I live, is not mm-hmm. a real big town. Mm-hmm. We're not real big. We had three active funeral parlors mm-hmm. in our town. We had the mm-hmm. Sobieski funeral home, we had Frank Foran's funeral home, and then we had the Luznicki's. And, and my family were Polish-Italian. My dad mm-hmm. was the Polish, my mom was the Italian. And it was an ethnic difference even in the funeral parlors. Mm. When somebody from the Italian side died, it was always out of Foran's funeral home. Somebody from the Polish side died, the wake was always yes. at the Sobieski's. Mm-hmm. So even amongst the funeral parlors, they had a mm-hmm. distinction. And, and, for, yeah. and for many, many years, the Resurrection Cemetery was known as a Polish cemetery. Ah, okay. Now yeah. everybody's in there, but it was uh, predominantly uh-huh. Polish. Uh-huh, yeah. see. And, and yet the ceremony, I'm sure, was the same. Yeah. But, uh, was you know, that was yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> and it maybe was that he knew your grandmother and mm-hmm. your sisters right. and... And that's what it was all about. Yeah, that's you know, it was just nothing always, more. Yeah, just an ethnic difference even in that. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I know at one time it was in that area between like Bridgeport and Canaryville over that way, which in Chicago would be around Halstead. Mm-hmm. Canaryville goes from like 39th to 40, 47th or 49th, and uh, Bridgeport would be north. Well, you know, mostly the Bridgeport people were, not, not mostly, but that was where the uh, Lice Curtain people had been. Mm-hmm. Because uh, prior to the Chicago fire, 39th Street or Pershing Road now, that was the south li- limit of the city limits. Right that was there. the end of it. Mm-hmm. So, and then that's why after the, they could still build sh- sh- uh, frame places mm-hmm. in uh, Canaryville. But anyway, there was a funeral power to get to the, what I'm talking about. The name of it was Catch em and Kill. <laughs> two, <laughs> two family names together. So that's true, by the way. So you can take that one to the bank. Who could ever make that one up? Yeah. Okay. Well, when I was a kid, uh, Narragansett was the 
end of the west, uh, yeah, the west Pretty side much, of Chicago. Know, you know, I mean, that was all farms. Farmland, and, yeah. I yeah, I mean, that, you know, where now you go to Narragansett, you'd say, really? Yeah. You know, so it's amazing. Going to Narragansett in those days was like being on Mannheim now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, now, um, the reason it is Narragansett, too, that's an Indian tribe, I believe. Right? Narragansett Indians? I believe so, yeah. yeah. But the reason yeah. they call it Narragansett instead of Ridgeland is because there is a Ridgeland in Chicago. Over around 87th and Stony Island, there's a Ridgeland. So, there we go. I just threw that in a little. Ridgeland, Narragansett, Nagop. Three names, mm-hmm. pretty much describing the same street, different mm-hmm. section of the city. Yeah. Well, you can go, um, was it Nagel? Oh, no, no, no. Nagel? Tecumbo? Oh, here it is. Uh, Holman, Independence Boulevard, and there's one more. They're all the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like Kedzie, Judd, and McCormick. It's the same it? street. No, no. Cumberland is First Avenue, Cumberland, oh, right, and Pueblo. You know, yeah. it's it's Cicero is Skokie. Is Skokie. Am Skokie say, Boulevard. Skokie Boulevard. Right. No I mean, it's, it, you know, if you go, I don't know where Skokie Boulevard is, yeah. and you're driving on. And a lot of the road. side streets still change their names south of North Avenue because you're in a different township, mm-hmm. like Waller's. Versus mm-hmm. Menard Marmora. Mm-hmm. Big change yeah. there, too. Or the street well, jobs. And the Chicago street jobs streets committed. usually are alphabetical, like all the M's well, the are K together. Streets yeah. West, right? right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A mile but, of each letter. But yeah. That's, not exactly no, they are. It's the first letter. Right. You've but got I, a Rutherford in there somewhere. If they were alphabetical, that would be Yeah, say a Rutherford and Oak Park in there. Compared to suburban, which I am now, it's certainly much easier to do addresses in Chicago. As big as Chicago yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's yeah. all over the place. If you go to the suburbs, it's all over the oh, place. You oh, can't yeah. keep track. I think how, like, you just can't a place keep track like of it all. Park Ridge yeah. will start the numbering scheme over again. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I was at yeah. a big four-digit yeah. number. Now I'm at two. And Oak Park is yes. the same way. Totally yeah. different numbering yeah. system. Yes. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I found that so hard to accept. It is tricky. Yeah. I would it's crazy. be, you know, just a little turn around. I'd say, could you tell me where 200 South is? And it would be 200 south in this suburb, but not, and yeah. then, it, you know, I'd be getting exactly. that way, and like you said, Park Ridge. Yeah, a lot of places just extended the Chicago numbers. Like Probably depends on summer, when right? they were built up, too. North and south. Yeah. West. Yeah, you'll still see some names, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Fullerton and all that. And the main streets are pretty Armitage. true. But you'll have, like, a 72nd Court, 73rd Court. Yeah, 72nd yeah, Street. Sounds like Elmwood Park. Yeah, Park. Yeah. Place yeah. in Court where... Mm-hmm. Or very circular. Yeah. And that <laughs> turns to be another uh, way of looking at it. You know, but anyway. Because anyone can tell, know what the f- first street east of Harlem is. East, east of Harlem? Sayre? Mm-hmm. Is it Sayre? First street east. I want to say Nina, perhaps? East Neva. Of Neva. 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 No, no. Neva. Neva. Wait. It's Troy. Oh, is that That's, the old? It's east of Kesey, but all the other streets are avenues except oh. Pulaski Road. <laughs> well, now, there's a Devil. good question. That's a barbet joke. <laughs> avenues versus streets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It actually meant something at one time. The width. And the width, yeah. Yeah. Width and how are you supposed to be able to... Well, they're all trying to get like the north-south like streets one and the east-west streets the other, which would make one sense. One could drive a horse down, a horse wagon or something. Oh, That's okay. I don't know. When? So there's an old explanation, but today it's pretty much... All but three streets in Norwich are avenues. I think there's like three non-avenue streets in Norwich, and everything else is an avenue. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Is that West right? Street. I think so. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well. Even like Irving Park Road is Irving Park Avenue once you get into Norwich. Is it? I have to check that out. Oh. That's, oh. That's interesting. Signs. Forest yeah. Preserve, I think, has slightly changed. It's still drive, I think. I think it's Forest Preserve. I think it's always Forest Preserve. It is. Drive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the first through. street west of the lake is State Street, because the rest of the avenue is well, Wabash yeah. Avenue, Michigan Avenue, Indiana. Or road, you know, there's the uh-huh. boulevards too, like Marquette Boulevard, or which uh, could be road or drive. All those terms are pretty much the same. Tricky. You know, one time Easy. now, a long time before you guys were around, <laughs> and you, even you, <laughs> Robert, <me>. could remember, <laughs> we had uh, the Chicago City Police Department, and you had the Park District Police. Right, yeah. right, mm-hmm. Park right. District Police put all the park area, area and the boulevards, which connected them. Mm-hmm. So you had these two different... So areas. boulevard had a very Pacific meaning. In yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. supposed to be non-commercial, mm-hmm. uh, like kind of better paved and kind right. of a pleasure street to rent. It had an elegance. Uh, yeah, you had yeah. cost you more to, to rent on a boulevard. Mm-hmm. Than mm-hmm. That's so right. Mm-hmm. I can remember, like, you look at some places now, you go over and you look, wow, this was something. South Parkway, which is King Drive now. There's some big buildings mm-hmm. down there. These mm-hmm. are, they're mansions. There, but they were one-time mansions. Mm-hmm. So or, Same or, with or, Logan or, Square and Logan Square. our way. Logan yeah. Boulevard, Palermo Park, 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 Park,
Makes you think we ought to go back to those days to kind it of was nice. restore the uh, boulevards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can remember Humble Park when you could uh, row, you know, the boats mm -hmm. and I mean, the lagoons, you, it, yeah. It, yeah, the lagoons and you know, it was almost like a, off the planet. It yeah. just you knew you were, went out and it Mark was wonderful. Park the Garfield pure, Park, yeah. Garfield Park was excellent like that. I mean, you really knew you went to a park. You didn't just say, mm -hmm. there's a track here or dirt. How many, or how many parks you got in Summit? The big one? Two. Two? The real big one is what? Legion Park and Summit Park. Which one? Legion, American Legion Park. Where's that? By Petty American Legion Hall. It's a little, small little park there. Oh, oh yeah. I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. Park. Mm -hmm. Just west of there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Legion Park, and then we have Summit Park. Which is off of, of, uh, off of Archer. Yeah, Archer Road. Where right it was. Mm -hmm. They used to call it Archer Road, where it was north and south. Yeah. They also says Avenue now. Because it kind of curves. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's still Archer Road. It's not Archer Road. I think Avenue. they call well, it Old, 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 old yeah, Archer. Yeah, they still say it. Old yeah. Archer. Is yeah. that how they word it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's another section of Archer that is almost east-west. Yeah. Yes. But they use the north-south numbering system. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah, that's, that's from the old. Yeah. Yeah. Narragansett to Harlem, or west of Harlem. That sounds right. From Narragansett to where 171 comes in, in Summit. Is it? You've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. Please don't turn that dial. Are you looking for a good place to have lunch or dinner? Well, I have just the right place for you to go, and that's Sorrento's Village Restaurant and Pizzeria, located at 2318 Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. Now, every Friday from 5 until 8.30 p.m., you can enjoy their all-you-can-eat buffet and pasta bar for just $11.95 for adults and nine, $7.95 for kids 10 and under. Sorrento's is proud to introduce its Friday night buffet with pasta bar made to order. Fritz pizza with your choice of vodka, four cheese Alfredo, or marinated sauce, plus Sorrento's meatballs and delicious sausage. And a buffet that is bursting with flavors from risotto, seafood, chicken dishes, and a variety of Sorrento's pizza and full salad bar and garlic bread. Again, just eleven ninety five for adults and seven dollars and ninety five for uh, seven ninety five for kids ten and under. All you can eat. You can also enjoy their affordable, perfect, full service catering. Catering that might sound expensive, but when you choose Sorrento's, we do the work and you take the applause for a memorable party, shower, barbecue, block party, or use of our beautiful banquet rooms. Uh, accommodating 20 to 200 guests and plenty of free parking. Many catering orders can be even prepared the same day or within 24 hours. Remember, for the best food in town, go to Sorrento's Village Restaurant and Pizzeria, which is located at 2318 North Mannheim Road in Melrose Park, just south of Fullerton on the west side of the street, and plenty of free, free parking. You can call Frank or Sam at area code 847-455-9440. And no other weekday lunch buffet is like it. Sorrento's weekday, Monday through Friday, lunch buffet is perfect for business, get-togethers, even funeral luncheons. Soup, salad, pasta, pizza, vegetables, and freshly baked bread, meat or fish, plus dessert. Once again... Call Frank or Sam at area code 847-455-9440. And I, trust me, friends, you will not be disappointed. Sorrento's, 2318 North Mannheim Road, Melrose Park, Illinois, area code 847-455-9440. Now, back to our discussion. Jack? Yes, sir. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. 
We hope you're still with us. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians, and it's, it's a really fun time for us. We hope you enjoy it half as much. Now, where were we talking about? Remember, our topic was life in Chicago, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And uh, we can only have a little conjecture about tomorrow, but we, it's easy to contrast things before to what we are doing now. And in many areas, we are we doing yeah. Yeah. Is it any better, any worse, or indifferent, just different? Mm-hmm. So what were, we, what were we on last topic when we broke down? Well, we were at streets, but you know, we have uh, Kevin here and Tim. Mm-hmm. I wonder what they could tell us about the slight changes or, or what they do for activities or uh, do you use the word game or what what in your life of from maybe seven years old up or what do you see as different? I mean, or, or how do we sound to you? What? Well, what are we saying that you don't? I mean, be kind. <laughs> I'll try. No, yeah. Well, we can I, take I, it. I mean, board games used to be a huge thing growing up. You know, like every we'd always have a family board game mm-hmm. night. And I think even you you probably mm-hmm. remember that Monopoly was oh, yeah. a biggie. Monopoly I still love life. Monopoly. Oh yeah. Risk, risk anybody? Oh yeah. Uh, a little bit. Stratego Stratego mm-hmm. was another one. You know. Mm-hmm. So and now it's like it's all on the on the television mm-hmm. set. You know, like a mm-hmm. Call of Duty. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know Grand Theft Auto. Those games. Mm-hmm. Trivial See, those I don't for a while. Yes. That was maybe the last big popular mm-hmm. board yeah. game before the internet. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we still do tournaments on that one. So. Well, have you guys mm-hmm. ever played like apples to apples or cards against We, we play apples all the time. Yeah. Go. Good mm-hmm. game. Yeah. Cool. Or as mm-hmm. simple as war. Did you ever play that? Oh, the card, card? Yeah, the yeah. card game. I mean, yeah. simple, but... We always, as kids, as kids growing up, us always outside. Oh. Everything we did was outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the summer. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless the weather was real extreme, then you played Monopoly or something yeah. in the house. And you meant mm-hmm. morning to night. You didn't mean an hour. No, we were outside all the time. You came in when the street lights came on. There you are. That was, a that was invariable. Yeah. Yes, Summertime. nobody yeah. had a call. You, you came right. in, you checked in, then you went back out again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and of course, you're raising the uh, the years of real technology. Um, you know, and and I am way behind on that subject. But um, do you think it has taken uh, away from your uh, the communication of each other or? Do you, with your friends, you talk extensively, or do you sit with your family and have at yeah. the table well, I think conversations? What happens more now so is people wait. think they have a lot more conversations, like through Facebook and yep. stuff like that. But right. I'll be in a room with people, and they'll be on Facebook or mm. Twitter talking to someone who's not there. I'm like, um, I'm right here. I'm in yeah. the room. You can talk to me. And they're just not real anymore. You know, yeah. they, they might be more convenient. They might be quicker. But they're just not as real and authentic. And to refer to that as a conversation is very interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's a bit of a stretch. That's got to be one-on-one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there, there isn't any, like, depth to things. Like, uh, no. you could know somebody for a long time and almost say, I never knew that about you. Or I never... Yeah. And nothing, the, the tone isn't really conveyed as much as it used to be. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's a joke on Facebook. There's a group called, you know, sarcasm doesn't travel well over the mm-hmm. over the airwaves. And it's really true, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Point, unless you mm-hmm. actually know the person really well. So you're motionless so. people, too, uh, as far as uh, our silent uh, sign language to each other. And we wouldn't yeah. know if you're language. upset, body no. language, or... Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you really do. You really do. It's all compromised. So you yeah. do notice that, don't None you? Stuff, I do. Huh? Yeah. I, I brought it up for a, a, a more <laughs> up to date. He's eyebrows for those of you on the radio. <laughs> and we knew what that meant, see? Yeah. Um, up to date version of, of equalizing this conversation. In my line of work, I'm with a lot of people, and uh, I'm with youth. And, mm-hmm. uh, Thank uh, you. And it's no, no, no compared <laughs> to me, it's youth. But... Yeah. The point I uh, will have a moment where it just doesn't, uh, isn't noisy anymore and everybody's, you know, standing around or whatever. And uh, I hear myself talking, as you all hear me today. Uh, And I realize that there is no conversation. I never Mm -hmm. felt it as much as these last couple years of uh, sharing feelings and Mm -hmm. whatever, you know. And yet they're not trying to be standoffish or uh, I have a secret I won't let you know. It isn't like that. It's that something about this technology, a lot of texting, 
You know, yeah, what? everywhere you go, people doing that. I'll ask a yeah. secret. What are you saying to each other all <laughs> day long? Well, and sometimes when you read it, it's like, well, I had toast for breakfast this morning. It's like, yeah. well, I wouldn't have this in a regular conversation. No, uh-huh. not at all. But now I feel like no. I have to toast. No, and these are the status updates that exactly. people are posting. My yeah, daughter right. Jennifer said that's yeah. the way it is. Someone she knows from years ago on Facebook. I went to the gym. I went to the store. I went home. I went to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she, that's so. I well, in some stores, in some places, if you check in and you say, I'm here at this store, sometimes you get discounts and stuff like that, so it's kind of social uh, media. Yeah, there's like that. Uh-huh. Right. See, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. you know, comparing, like, gosh, I can't even remember being on the phone when I was a kid. In fact, it was almost mm-hmm. a treat to really talk to someone. Long distance it, calls were oh, really a Lord, yeah, Lord. Yeah. And, and oh, they'd yeah. be going... They cost several bucks. Yeah, it cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, like that. And and maybe the several bucks was two dollars. You know yeah. what I mean? Not, yeah, but not like the sure. hundreds I see yeah. on phone bills nowadays. And this would be a special yeah. call. They'd call you back when they had uh-huh. the line through and uh huh. And we deal with an operator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I brought this up before. We had a phone where the phone call was a nickel. All right? You put the nickel in and you talked away and maybe the operator would come and say you have one more minute, or hmm. you know, know, but you know, that's even on a local call, you had how the sa- it. a saying you got your nickels worth came ding, about. Ding, ding, it's ding. the same, thing. same thing. But yeah. you could talk a long time, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but I bet you I didn't do that once a month. <laughs> I mean, it, we, we just didn't have that. Now you mentioned paying a nickel. Mm-hmm. Was this at your house? You mm-hmm. had a payphone in your house. Some mm-hmm. people did. Okay. I think they should bring them back. <laughs> and they had party lines. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like different yeah. Rates definitely. Like uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Ridgewood still had a party line about ten years ago. They okay. did with That's a bakery, and it was one ring for the bakery and two rings for the school. Isn't That's that good? It, it That's was amazing. grandfathered yeah. in, and no one ever bothered to update it. Mm-hmm. And then they finally, when the bakery <laughs> closed up, it was Thompson's mm-hmm. Bakery. All of a sudden, we had our own phone line. And there was a box, Kevin. Naturally, where the nickel went, mm-hmm. and then once a month Somebody a fella would come, and that was your phone bill. The ding, ding, ding. You know, <laughs> whatever amount of nickels is what what your bill just, was. Just like they a, had the money. Just like a payphone. Uh-huh. Uh, there used to be a payphone. You have it be sitting on on the wall with the cord coming out, going to a, a, a desk phone or a wall phone, mm-hmm. and when you wanted to make a phone call, you put the nickel in the... I never saw that myself. Yeah, I have, way. yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, I took many of them out right near this, this yeah, area. Yeah, I mean, it, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, it was a, long, a while ago, but yeah, I can remember that very... How about the distinct. meters on the television, CET had? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. In the old days. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I never saw that with a phone in the house, but TVs, I know people that I had I never it. saw that yeah. personally, but I knew there was, you know. And then you, you used the money for the payment on the TV. Yeah. That was your payment on yeah. the TV. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah. I mean, it isn't no a bad idea, is no. it, for and life? And CET, no. CET owned WCIU Channel 26 at the time. Who did? CET. Who did they? Yeah. Chicago Engineers for Television. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Channel 26, that was the first UHF mm-hmm. station. Yes, also. that's why their yeah. call letters were WC. And sometime Chicago like... First UHF. Sometime like in a, a distance of two blocks, you were the only one that had a TV, and all your friends <laughs> would come. Of course. You almost had, were buying uh, these type of folding chairs. Be, you know, mm-hmm. Milton Burrow or something. And, and then and the first person who had color TV, probably the same thing happened. Well, it was same. like, gotta come over and watch Johnny Right, Cotton nobody, had, not everybody the got everything, you know. Yeah. So you Only said, a couple channels, right? A couple yeah. channels. Yeah. And a lot of us right. old-timers remember telephone exchanges. I was going to say. And they had distinctive geographic. Right. Oh, yeah, boundaries. like a, so if, if you knew a Kildare or Avondale, oh, so you knew yeah. what part of the town they were from. And yeah. that would tell you where you lived, yeah. We had Republic. We were Republic. I thought it's because there were a lot of Republicans around there, but there weren't. Mm-hmm. Republic, Grove Hill, Prospect Six and Prospect Eight. Two of those. Uh, Hemlock. Mm-hmm. Grove Hill. Did I say Grove Hill? That we was had like Southside Jack. Yeah, and we had totally Berkshire, Spalding, Berkshire, Spalding, mm-hmm. National. Over wow. here was Gladstone. Superior. Well, Gladstone is up here. Gladstone. Yeah. Yeah. Palisade. Oh, four, four, one hundred. Yeah. Hudson's yeah. Reek, no, yeah, there you go. Yep. That was that, Hudson's Hudson's 3, 2, 7, 100. When when we were kids, we didn't know what that really meant. And we thought, boy, is Gladstone Bakery? Sure. <laughs> they own all the yeah. phones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and here it was just an, an, so the an first area. So the like, first two would be R-E, and then the seven for the first number. Then that would be, you know, it says mm-hmm. 737 was R-E-7. Mm-hmm. Was the same thing, mm-hmm. really. But, and you could always remember your old numbers. I couldn't tell oh, you yeah. three back. Anymore, but 
you know, as a kid, you could remember well, your house. it's all speed dials and programming that's now. That's what so, I'm yeah. saying. You know, it's just Plus, you had probably one family phone number. Up. If you had brothers and sisters, you had the one house mm -hmm. phone, the house phone number. Mm -hmm. Now you've got that's 12. Point. You've got mm -hmm. your home number, your car number. Oh, yeah. That's the point. Mm -hmm. I know Shields as a kid. Livingston 80021. Living. See? Wow. Well, I'm going back to the early 50s. We, we moved in our new house in 52. Mm -hmm. so. I was just going to ask you that. Did you all rent? Did you all own a house? Because, you know, that was still well, the time of a lot of renting. We always Start had out. a house, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just owners at our house. I, I, was, I was born and raised over at Addison and Oakley, 3528 right. North Oakley. And our phone number over there was Graceland 2. Four four five eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, when I started with Illinois Bell, I started at the telephone office up on Northwest Highway, 6001 Northwest Highway. Mm -hmm. And out of that office, you had Newcastle 1, which is now 631, Rodney 3, 763, mm -hmm. Spring 4, SP4, and Spring 5, SP5. That, that handled the Chicago area. Then we had 647, which took part of uh, uh, Norridge over here on Irving and, and, um, and Harlem. Mm -hmm. The uh, east side of the street, from uh, Irving Park Road all the way, all the way to uh, the, the end of, of Norwich, and then we had mm -hmm. six four seven, which was Nile Seven, and that took care of around uh, Tui and uh, Lehigh up in that up in that area. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people tell me, well, wh where do you, where do you live? Uh, I mean, what's your phone number? Oh, you live in a such and how do you know that? Because I <laughs> spent 37 years with yeah. the phone company, and I knew yeah. exactly where some of the um, exchanges came out of. But now with portable dialing numbers, with portability of numbers now, you can't do no, that anymore. No, you can't. Right? Now with cell phones, no. Right. Just like mm -hmm. my number is area code uh, uh, 320-5515, and uh, I mean, I can, that can come out of it. Uh, Tony's number here is a 618 uh, three one two six one eight number, and uh, it. Uh, I mean, I'm. It, it all comes out of the, the same area, but you don't know exactly where. You know, it's it's not designated to a house or, or anything. It's just no. wireless now. Well, my daughter Jen, the older girl, for five years she lived in Northern Virginia, the same as my younger one is. She still got her same old number, <laughs> same area code from mm -hmm. uh, uh, two two o two area code from Washington D.C. So it's another thing. Um, with the um, Area codes. Yeah. Are area codes a very old thing, John? You were, you were, they must go back some years, aren't they? Uh, uh, well, well, at one time, 60s, I want to say maybe the 70s. Yeah, you know. maybe 40 well, years. At, at one time, Chicago, the whole city of Chicago so was 312. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Was and all the suburbs, yeah. 312 yeah. was the original, I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then 815 right. was just the outer, now it's just outer downtown. rock area. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now 312 is downtown, the loop area. Center, yeah. Central Park. And, and then as you come in, it's 773. And 773 is the rest of Chicago. There's overlays. The, yeah. the overlays are a big problem. That's though. right. Now, 847 is overlays. Yeah, yeah. yeah because they're running out of numbers, yeah. aren't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> and now, now you got 708, which takes care of the, the, the villages around like Norwich, Harwood Heights. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got, yeah, and then, then you got 847, which takes care of the, like, North, North, Franklin North, Carson sorry, goes yeah. north. But they have overlays. Yeah. And then uh, Crystal Lake is 815. And I think uh, far south is 8152. Totally somewhere, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, an interesting yeah. thing about area codes is the way the equipment was built, the middle digit of an area code up until the mid-90s had to be a zero or a one. So eventually they oh, ran out of zero and one numbers. Oh, they had to do all numbers. Okay, yeah. that, that makes sense. I know yeah. there was something with the numbers. I was on the North Atlantic dialing program. <laughs> uh, there was a committee that would discuss, like, area codes and prefixes and things like that and tell, tell, uh, telephone standards. And we had an argument oh, 25 years ago, about what to do with running out of phone numbers. And they took it to a vote, and I voted to say, let's put all cell phones on a different area code. And the overriding majority of people said, no, let's do overlays. So we've oh. got overlays today. So you were ahead of yourself. I wanted, I'm like, then you would know, because at the time, mm -hmm. all, all cell phones, incoming calls, outgoing calls, you had to pay per minute. So I'm like, oh, we'll just have an area code just for cell phones, and that way you don't have to dial 10 digits to call your neighbor. But I was overruled on that one. Mm. <laughs> so you were ahead of your time. No. So you have yeah. vision of what happens to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but I mean, that's, you know, it's interesting how things do come about, and, and this is it, necessity. I know um, when I first came on the job, all the, uh, John, your police, we call them the, the frequency zones, right. where the radio zone was in the area. Oh. So, as a matter of fact, I came home from work, this is years later, the kids were born. Away. My wife says, you don't listen to your radio very well, do you? What's the matter? Some guy was coming on the street knocking on the doors 
3 in the morning. I says, we're not on the same frequency. <laughs> so where I work is the 21st District and 2. Here is Inglewood and Chicago Lawn. They're in separate radio bands. But they used to be by the trunk. What are trunk lines? Uh, the old trunk, telephone trunk lines they had to go by. Okay, trunk lines is uh, way from telephone office to telephone office to telephone office. That's a, that's a trunk line. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, the, new, the, the office I said was uh, the way I started uh, at 61 Northwest Highway. That was new, the Newcastle office. Now, mm -hmm. we have a cable that feeds uh, River Grove office, the, the River Grove office, which is over on uh, Grand Avenue, just west of First Avenue. And then there's another trunk line that goes... Uh, to uh, to the Kilder office, which is on Irving Park Road and about uh, just just uh, east of um, of uh, Laramie, mm -hmm. and that's the trunk line. This is what connects one telephone office to another tel telephone office. And, and it's that's, not just one line; it's 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 a cable. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's many it's, many lines. Yeah. Now now years years after that, after they put in the cable, now they want what carriers. And what they can do, they can get about five or six conversations over one pair of uh, one pair of wires, just like your your T1 for radio broadcasting. Uh, when I was with WAIT, we had a T1 uh, line that went out to Clark Weber's house and well met. On that T1, we were able to get his broadcast well, we, that went over the air. We were able to talk to him engineer to engineer, and also we were able to uh, type him messages on the computer. In other words, uh, Kevin was on line one. Okay, we're not going to go to the phones. We're going to talk to Kevin on line one because the studios would take and type that information uh, on his computer, and then he would sit there and watch, or we would put on there a time to take a break or whatever. So uh, T1, you can get, and that's the same thing what they have now with uh, what they call that carriers now. Yeah, T1 is 24 pairs of phone wire. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they so. put the first phone in the White House. It was either 1876 or 1877, and the White House was number one. That's right. That was the phone number. <laughs> it was number one. Yeah. The wires ran right out of the second floor window, and it went to the Treasury, the Capitol, and the Senate, <laughs> yeah. and that was it. <laughs> And every time it rang, the president answered it himself. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Really? Kind of a, she talked talk to the talk. boss. Not somebody in Bombay, right? <laughs> yeah, it was no, yeah, it was number one. So, it was so that, trunk, trunk line is from, from telephone office to telephone office, and, uh, and then out in the backyard, like in the back of a house here, that's what we call aerial cable or, or uh, subscriber cable. See, when we, when we still have the trunk lines going, one police district, we went from like 35th to 60th, and had to go west because of the trunk line. But... South of 55th, it was at a different frequency because mm -hmm. it was a different trunk line. That's right. There's going to be a hot call going on yeah. down there. We don't know what the hell it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. same thing you didn't hear it. Same thing with no. the Chicago Fire Department. Anything from 39th Street to Howard Street and from the, from Lake Michigan to uh, uh, to, to about, uh, I think, maybe Manham or maybe First Avenue was called Maine. In fact, they still call it Maine yet, the Maine Fire Alarm off, uh, Office. That's mm -hmm. where Ken worked out of. Uh, anything south of uh, 39th Street, to the south end of the uh, city limits was 115th or something like that. That's what they call Englewood. Okay, Englewood one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is over Englewood Avenue and... Yeah, whatever. now, th their office used to be at 65th and, uh, and Wentworth Avenue, is where the old Englewood office mm -hmm. was, until they built the 911 center. Right. Maine was uh, was in room 605 of, of City Hall. Hmm. And that's where Ken, that's where uh, your Ken grandfather uh, spent yep. uh, his whole career. Up, up there. We're speaking of Ken Little, our one AMSET member today. He's a charter member who also teaches a Chicago history class at Wright Junior College. Mm -hmm. So yep. we're hoping he's feeling better yep. and come down the next time. Definitely. Yeah. Wish him well. He's been sure he's been teaching special. that class for many years, many years. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully yeah, everything will Very be nice okay man. for him. Yeah. Is history like younger folks are you interested in? history generally or not? I heard it's not being taught like it used to. Um, well, I mean, I like, you know, I like Chicago history a lot. I mean, I like U.S. history a lot. I, I don't know about world history, but I, certainly the history of this country after the Civil War era, yeah. Well, that's the most important, I would say, wouldn't you, Robert? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, Jim, did you ever have a class in school entitled history? Was this taught as a single class? You know what we did actually? We we actually they introduced at my school um, shortly after we got off Christmas break a winter term class, um, which is like a quarter of a credit because it only went for like three and a half weeks or so, not even like three weeks. And we got to tour downtown. We got to go to different locations. It was called you know Chicago history and architecture. Oh good. And good. yeah, it was it was terrific. You know and um, you know my grandfather he was able to give me some pointers. You know help study a little bit for that. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, that was a, so, it was a great class, a lot of field trips. It sounds important that you can actually relate to it then, and what this yeah. means. Like Some people can say, look, this was a coach house, and they go, what's that? What, what do you yeah. care about that yeah. stuff for? Yeah. You know, I can't eat or drink that. 
Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about adults telling you this. Yeah, I mean, it helps you get a good appreciation for what you have, kind of. What was there before? Yeah. And the progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, oh, we, yeah. we don't see progress. A good deal happens. of uh, Chicago, well, any history in general, but in a good deal of Chicago history, a lot of people don't even know it existed. Right. A lot of people don't know we had two world's fairs in the city of Chicago. Yep. Uh, they don't know that some of the buildings that are leftovers from those world's fairs, mm -hmm. a lot of those, they, they just Or they know. can't even yeah. tell you the yeah. building. I mean, no. they look at it every day. No, no, I, right. I don't what know. Does that mean? I think it's the, you know. Yeah. And they're or, uh, passing it. Where was Chicago Municipal Airport? Where's that, for example? You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, That's Midway now. Yes. Named after the Battle of oh, Midway. I'm sorry. Oh, I that's thought, right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us. <laughs> I did. I did. There you go. <laughs> no. Uh, you know what? You just brought up that trunk line. Do you think uh, with things being so antique-like, do you think that hindered our, our Chicago Fire, too, as far as communication or, uh, you know? Chicago Fire? Yeah. Meaning, now, did we have... No phones in those days. No, I was just going to yeah, say, yeah. did how did we how did we com communicate? Smoke telegraph. signals. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Telegraph. Tell yeah. I mean, it was yeah. definitely no, the we had, fire department. We had alarm boxes too. up on top of it, like they had firehouses every so many blocks or whatever, yeah. and there was someone up on the top. Yes, yeah, possibly they could answer that. I don't John, know. John, John, John could know. tell you. Okay. But they, they had the three main ways of getting news around were telegraph, telephone, and telewoman. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 well, no one's gonna be wrong. wrong. Nobody's bigger, bigger gossips than police stations. You know the way rumors can get around there in no time. I think the first fire brigade in this country was organized by Benjamin Franklin. The first volunteer yeah. fire department was Benjamin so Franklin. Well, the man did yeah. so much it would yeah. not yeah. shock me. He was concerned. He was really big on fire prevention. That's why he invented the lightning rod. Because so mm -hmm. many buildings were getting struck by lightning, right. starting on fire, and he invented the lightning uh -huh. rod to prevent fires. Yeah, the grounded. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But every other town, I don't know what their, you know, what their thing was for fire prevention. No, wait a minute. You know, Did Benjamin, a Benjamin Franklin invent that or that little mouse that lived in his hat? <laughs> yeah. <But> it depends <laughs> what story you hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just it just came to me. Uh, yeah. How did they communicate? What, you know. Somebody this far out, and you wouldn't find anybody this far out. But yeah, telegraph, you know, you letters, you, and yet you know. postal letters, you know, uh -huh. newspapers. Uh -huh. They did have. People but I mean, I mean to get. To get help immediately. You didn't get help immediately. You didn't. You got and help as soon as you could get there. So much yeah, you got help as soon as you could get there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what I. Um, meant. Nobody even really fully realized the full impact of radio and radio communications until the Titanic disaster. Mm -hmm. When they when they had to send the mm -hmm. SOS out over the radio waves for help, uh, mm -hmm. then people realized this was something wow. more than a novelty. We need yeah, this. this was, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was more they starting to use SOS as an emergency signal. That was the first time it was. In fact, that's where they. That's the, first, it, that's the first time it? SOS sure. was used, yeah. Uh -huh. Up until, before SOS was CQD, Isn't it, it was yeah. CQD. When you think of it. Yeah. CQD? Yeah, then it went to SOS, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did mm -hmm. CQD stand for? Come quickly, distress. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It means something. Yeah. So they were texting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you thought of it that way, you yeah. know. And SOS is same old what? Uh -oh. save, our, save, save our ship. Yeah. Save our ship. I think yeah. it's save our ship. Okay. I think. <laughs> you say that. You're on the radio. Yeah. Then you want SOS. And it's a morning breakfast, too. And there's SOS pads, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but in the service, you know, SOS. Same but that was, so Titanic was 1912, but still radio didn't come into general use until the 20s, right. like mid-20s. Right. Then mm -hmm. it started coming to be into its own. And it was, then, of course, the 30s, every, everybody had a radio. Mm -hmm. It was 30s. still a novelty until someone said they wanted to buy some advertising time with one station in New right. York. They said, you want to buy time here? <laughs> it was some new development <laughs> uh, north on Manhattan or something. So for $25 or some, on, you know, really low, 15 or $25, one announcement was made, and within a day or two, all these places were Everybody knew sold. about it, huh? Yeah. Was that a so watch company? I think huh? the first, was the first commercial sponsor of a show a watch company or something Could like be. that? Could mm -hmm. be. Could be, but right. I'm just saying, they said, hey, we got something here all of a like sudden. Like Bulova? <laughs> or yeah. a watch like company that. or soap. Soaps were real big, too. Yeah, soap, soap or something. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the soap operas came from. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they all had soap Yeah, because all the soap, uh, soap makers sponsored all the shows. Rinsolite and Lux and, yeah, you know, you don't hear those names. Oxidol. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Fab. Uh-huh. White Rain. I was one. Win Rinso White and Rinso Blue. Mm -hmm. Rinso. Happy Rinso. Little Wash Day song, yeah. Um, what else? Little All boy, your soap brought Little up. Boy Blueing, the blueing mm -hmm. stuff for the mm -hmm. wash and that thing. Yeah. Blueing. And Who uses dark, blueing now? No, they, they still dark. sell it. Oh. They still, yeah, they, they still do. Sell it. Yeah, little Boy Blueing, yeah. Do they really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That, that's, well, that's ironic, too. I was thinking of uh, just, just yesterday at work, I said, 
what, what day is it? You know how you just say it. And, it's wash day. But you knew. <laughs> there you Sun go. Baker. Which was Monday. But of yeah. course, yesterday was Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it almost break Sunday time? Sunday was yeah. for church. Sunday Oops. was church or yeah. or uh, golf. A pla- <laughs> <laughs> no, planning a good dinner, even though you had a good dinner every day. Which we- Monday, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Sunday night, you soaked your clothes because they had a soak in the bluing mm. and the bleach. And then Monday you washed, was wash day. Don't forget, we had a, we didn't have an automatic, you know, we hung yeah. everything outside. The ringer. Two, right. Tuesday you ironed. <laughs> Wednesday you uh, baked or, uh, uh, you know, got yourself together, the groceries. Oh, Thursday was like, well, if you had something to do on the outside world. Friday you started getting ready for Saturday when you had cleaning Mm -hmm. and company. Mm -hmm. And here we went. And you are these the lyrics to the two ton baker song that you're just reciting right now? Which is that? I don't know. Today is Monday. Oh yeah. Oh really? Well because I don't know I don't know the whole song. The the whole the whole idea is we we knew I'm proud of you. You know two ton. You're very up to date, Kevin. We once again interrupt the proceedings for some messages of interest and importance. Just like the Gerald Moore. Exhibitors Carpet Services changed their name to Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose Avenue in Chicago. And their new location is at 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, Illinois, called Carpet of Highwood. Stop in at Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose, phone number 773-283-0100. Or at 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, phone number 847-266-1400. For carpets in your living room, dining room, bedroom, den, or family room, Stop in at either location for a great deal. Once again, Carpet Warehouse at 4300 West Montrose Avenue, phone number 773-283-0100 in Chicago, or Carpet of Highwood, 440 Sheridan, phone number 847-266-1400. Remember, if you need a carpet for your living room, dining room, den, or family room, Stop in at 4300 West Montrose in Chicago, phone number 773-283-0100 or at 440 Sheridan Road in Highwood, phone number 847-266-1400. We're back on. We are back on. Okay, we're back. We are back on. Uh, We were just talking during the break. They were talking, we brought up this question of the stockyards a little bit. Now, nobody, uh, I'm surprised that younger people remember the stockyards. They've been gone for some time. But um, we were bringing up the thing of funeral parlors that were close to the stockyards because the stockyards used to get so many fatalities. Uh, They were not safe places to work. So many people were injured or killed in the stockyards. A lot of cattle. Yeah, a lot of cattle were killed in the stockyards. And they would take the bodies right to the closest funeral parlors of the stockyards. Hmm. Um, The novel, I think it was Upton Sinclair, the novel was called... The Jungle? The Jungle. The Jungle, That brought to light a lot of the working conditions Mm -hmm. in the stockyards and the the bad conditions people had... uh, It was also responsible for... Pure Food and Drug Act or something? Yeah, well, that came around 1906, the Pure Food and Drug Act. But um, nonetheless, the stockyards served the purpose. It put a lot of people to work, and a lot of people that, Mm -hmm. you know, immigrants that were coming into the city in Mm -hmm. Chicago and had uh, found employment in the stockyards. So there was no lack of people wanting to take the jobs. Uh, And when they closed, a lot of people were thrown out of work. They started closing out around 1960. There was still some there in the late middle 60s, but I think by 1970 it was pretty much gone. I didn't care about the stockyards. I was just upset when Riverview closed. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that true? Yeah, 67. I used to love love Riverview. Oh, my goodness. Now, Riverview, for anyone listening, was an amusement park. Belmont and Western. Yeah, uh-huh. mm-hmm. we've talked about that a lot here. Mm-hmm. It was uh, I always right tell people Riverview was the it was the predecessor of Great America. <laughs> That's yeah. what I tell people. And yeah. still better than that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Lord. Two cents a ride. Two cent two. That cents. was there. Yeah, you go. And then we had cents. a free day. Yeah, you could do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was every ride you could ever think of. You and could it stay there from uh, morning to night. And it wasn't sanitized. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, it it just. It was like the fantasy of the world. Yeah. You 
Yeah. Always wanted to go to Riverview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My yeah. grandmother worked there. She worked. She oh. was an embroiderer, and she was in the peanut. Oh, okay. One side was peanuts, and one side was embroidering like pillows. And yes. Like that. Is that <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> See, but uh, I myself personally w- witnessed a terrible accident. As we entered, there was a. Uh, uh, oh, what could be the name of it? It looked like a boat, and then it would go up. The chutes. And you're in a cage, but no, the chutes okay. were... Round, like a centrifugal force? Yeah, no, it right. was the just... The no, hun- it oh, the thing they had a rock. You had a rocket that, by hand? There yeah, you I remember that thing. And then the yeah, motor yeah, yeah, yeah. would suddenly turn uh, you and upside it would go down. And it would go up, right. I'm, I forget cage, what they called it, but I remember it, yeah. The cage opened. Mm-hmm. And somebody and flew women, out. Yeah, oh. and it was it was. No one ever thought trip. to safety. Uh, there was none of that. I don't think the city stepped in I can remember going riding the bobs with my father. I was always the one he dragged on everything because nobody else wanted to go, so I was with him. And I just held on to the bar for dear life. Aren't you right? And my father put his arm around me, holding on for dear life with his other arm. And of course, yeah. you know, could make and you I can, stand. I can remember standing up and there you going are. so fast, and I thought it was great. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah, know? go right there. And, and the freak show and oh, stuff like that. We'd go in there, and I used to love that, yeah. Couldn't find I would go, more My mother, people. we'd go to the freak show. My mother, my brother, my dad, and myself, we'd go, and we would go to Riverview, and Bobby, come on, let's go to the freak show. So I would go in with him. My brother wouldn't go. Ray would be afraid of it. My mother would definitely, mm-hmm. wasn't her thing. And mm-hmm. I would go, and we'd be in there so long, and my, my mom would say, what were you doing in there? He'd say, well, that's him. He had to talk to everybody. And right. I would talk to them all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The yeah. bearded lady and stuff. Yeah, oh, oh, was in there. I would talk Popeye uh, and the, the yeah. ladies, the claws the alligator man. All yeah. that. All yeah, that. The, the fat guy man. with all the swords yeah. sticking out of him. When you think about it now, it's... By today's and those standards, were all sick. illnesses, and it we was didn't very, know it. It was yeah. very degrading or that oh, kind of thing, but yeah. you know, they never thought of it no. that way. But no, see, um, well, no. A, lot, a lot of states banned those. Yeah. Things. Guess who was against it? The exhibits, the people who worked there. Yeah, sure. Well, they're they're yeah. closing down our livelihood. Sure. Yeah, exactly. But mm-hmm. you see, yeah. those peoples with those, disi- those were diseases they had. Sure, mm-hmm. yeah. They were put away. That mm-hmm. was normal. Right. You had a kid yeah. that was a little different. Yeah. They were put away, you know. I know, I remember. Mm-hmm. Here, he just gave me the book on the oh Riverview Amusement God, Park. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he just got the book on Well, the, yeah. the point of it, it was, that was keeping them human, even though we're, they were gawked at, they earned a little pay, but, sure, but and their them. parents didn't have to put them away. They right. joined the circus, and they, they never minded it. No, they never no, minded it. I no. think they liked it. I really do. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it, it come, come see me. They got the attention, and it brought them some celebrity yeah. status. Yeah, and I right. yeah. 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 Too. Yeah. Did anyone sure. ever see a movie from like 1933 called Freaks? Oh yes, uh huh. Freaks, directed by um, Todd Todd Browning, who directed Dracula. It's an MGM, and it takes place in the sideshow. And it's, it's, it is, the end is very scary, I thought, itself, but the way it's played up and the way it's done. and uh, But they have actual, not all are, they're actors there, too. But, I mean, uh, they had, in the backdrop, here are the uh, pinheaded people. They do a little mm-hmm. underdeveloped their brains and uh, whatever, the frog oh, boy, whatever they call them. Out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. And, uh, oh, my God. Take it in sometime. It will scare you. It's, 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 I'm looking at this book here. They're showing... They're showing the shoot to shoots. Now, the shoot to shoot was that thing that you sat in and it just went into the water. Yeah. Yeah. And I can remember as a kid being Get so afraid wet. that yeah. that water was so deep you dry. It was yeah, 18 it inches was deep. Nothing. That's all it was was 18 yeah. inches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything John, was yeah. A Did you ever fantasy. tell your story on the air of when you were on the ride with the uh, parachutes? I'm going to tell it right now. Let's go. I thought we were going to do yeah. something. Let's hear that. Sure that. <laughs> okay. Right. You know, everybody knows that they had the parachute jump. Yeah. In fact, from my bedroom where I lived at 3528 North Oak, I could see the parachute jump up there, okay? Well, one day my pal, Eddie Rosanic and I, we decided that we we're going to go on a parachute jump. Okay, so we paid. And all you do is sit on a plank like a, like, like yeah. a, like a piece of two-by-four. <laughs> and we were, we were sitting there, and uh, they strapped us in and all that. And the thing started going up and going up. goes up real slowly. And the two of us, I tell you, we were, we were scared. All right? So we go all the way up to the top. Now, when you hit the top, you're supposed to hit, and then it comes, comes, comes down. Well, what happened? We were about a foot from hitting the top of the tower. Commonwealth Edison lost their power. And we sat up there for about 45 minutes. I tell you, well, after, after our nerves calmed down a little bit, we were able to see that high up, because that's before the, the Sears Tower and the Hancock Tower. We could see across Lake Michigan. Yeah. And it was a beautiful sight, but uh, I'll talk about being scared. And then they, they're hollering, uh, t- telling us on megaphones, don't be scared, don't be scared, we'll get you down right away. You don't get, you know, and out. But well, as we were going up, we heard a big explosion, and Commonwealth Edison was on the other side of the, of, of the river. 
and that's that's you know where they have got their power. And uh, and now you're talking about the, um, the 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 shoots there. Okay, what it was is you you got in a boat, they raised you up on an elevator, and you got to the top, and then they were taken. And, and uh, the guy would be up there, and he would push the boat down. He'd go down the ramp, and he'd splash into, uh, uh, pool. In, into a big, yeah. big, big like pond of water out. there. Yeah. And I was just telling Tony uh, just a minute ago, uh, I used to go there. The Riverview Park used to open up in around Memorial Day and close at Labor Day. And I used to sit in front of, in front of that pond and watch <coughs> the boats go down. And behind behind me was a big speaker that they played music on, and I just that was that was my home in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Anybody wanted to find John the video, find him in, at Riverview mm -hmm. Park in front of the pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, over uh, right across from the Follies, uh, where they had you, you know you look in the mirror and you see yourself in different. Uh, Aladdin's oh, Aladdin's Castle. Castle. No, not Aladdin's Castle. There was another. There was another one, Clo closer, closer, right down the main entrance, uh, the main ramp. They had like a, a, a like a, a small garage, and in that little garage was a broadcasting studios for WGN Radio. Hmm. And WGN every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday about eight o'clock in the evening, Buddy Black, God rest his soul, was a great guy. He would be there, and he would be on from eight to eight thirty, and he would be interviewing different people that were in the audience. So of course, me being the radio nut that I I am. I took a clock radio, my tape recorder, reel to reel tape recorder, Time set shift. the radio, mm -hmm. set the radio to WGN, set the clock at eight o'clock, and when 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 the, the came eight o'clock, you know, from Riverview Park, blah blah blah, you know, they have their promo, and then we used to blow a whistle, we bring a whistle, we used to scream, holler, yell, whatever, go home. Listen to ourselves on on, on the tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marshall yeah. Brodine, who became Wizzo the Clown on, on yep. Bozo. Yeah, Marshall Brodine started off as a yeah, mm -hmm. pitchman at Riverview yeah. Park. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and I he tell you, I. A magician or yeah, he was a magician. That's he what was side boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he used to was do the side shows and yeah. he did the magicians yeah. mm -hmm. at Riverview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, do you know if they occasionally close the parachute jump down because of strong winds? Occasionally, well, yes, they, they did. did. Yeah, they did. yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I never rode the parachutes. I think I was too little or too afraid, or whatever, to go on there. Oh, I, mm -hmm. But I was on everything else. Anything. I can tell you that. Yeah. The, my my best Silver ride. Silver Streak, remember yeah. all those? Silver Streak, oh, the Comet, the yeah. Caterpillar, oh, the, the, so the, the Water Bugs. Did Weren't you they ever go on? Cars on Greyhound was the mild one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever actually get to ride down that ride, or you never went ever again? Oh, well, with the, the parachute? The yeah, we, yeah we, went, we went up once we went once after that. Because I'm you sure know. you got a free ticket or something. Yeah, <laughs> well, I tell you. A Greyhound was another one of my gray, uh, uh, yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday was two cent day. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday was two cent days. And then Tuesday and Thursday was five cent nights. Mm -hmm. So what we would do, we pay our two cents, get on a ride, go up and go on, on, on the attraction, come down, get off, pay soon. They pay two cents again and go back on again because mm -hmm. they would have you pay two cents to, to get on the ride and then let's ride again for five cents. Well, why mm. I pay five cents? I get two more rides. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, Riverview Park. Uh, I, I just, I just, I just told Tony, you guys start talking about Riverview Park. Oh yeah. They're gonna make me cry because that yeah. was the yeah. love of my life. I and really John, uh, every sailor, soldier, yeah. marine, mm -hmm. whoever had a furlough, yeah, because we had the Great Lakes yeah. uh, training and. And of course, uh, uh, O'Hare Airport was one no, of our sorry. biggest sure, uh, sure. places for the soldiers. There's a Toys to train. there now. I think Riverview Park was. I think there's a ah, well, there's, yeah, like a mall. Yeah. Yeah. Devry, Devry yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah. The mm -hmm. police station is there. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a, 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 a food store there. Mm -hmm. Jules, 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 Jules and Mariano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. some yeah. signs of it still there. You have to kind of look for them, but there's mm -hmm. some little mm -hmm. remnants of the yeah. old park mm -hmm. there. there and then be, behind her, right on Belmont Avenue, right by the bridge, was the old roller skating. Oh, I skated there yeah. so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. on the hill. On yeah, the, uh, that's right. Yeah. And and what happened is I, when I was working for Illinois Bell, I worked at Grayson Western. And oh, this yeah, particular, you were right there. This particular night, about about five o'clock in the afternoon or so, I see some black smoke, and what had happened is that uh, Riverview roller rink caught on fire. Caught on fire. Mm. Yeah, oh. it was a 5-11 alarm fire. I'm yeah, that was a nice one. one. I forget well. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Chicago yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, you're talking about Riverview. You're talking about roller rinks, and a lot of these 
amusement places to go, they're gone. They're, there's oh, no yeah, they're not there anymore. No, for sure. Bowling alleys, very yeah. few. Yeah. Many bowling alleys. Uh, in fact, even uh, Kitty Land. Yeah. 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 yeah, We did a show about Kitty Land before they closed. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the cost, other, cost of operating those parks these days is too much money. The liability. Yeah. Liability. Yeah. Liability. Yeah. liability. For the yeah. insurance on yeah. it is just phenomenal. Yeah, it really is. You can't tell me urban crime didn't play a part with River Oh, yeah. Yeah, it became not a haven for the big pockets to go in. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, somebody you know, always place, ruins right? it. Just Saturday Just night, uh, uh, Tony here asked me if I would take him over to a place called Go Bananas. Hmm. And that place over there, years ago, used to be and the Hub Rollery. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Rub Rollery. And I was there every Wednesday night roller skate. In fact, mm -hmm. I still have roller skates in, in the closet here. Mm -hmm. Because I worked at the telephone office at uh, Northwest Highway, went right down right down over to the hub and I used to go roller skating there until... Anybody remember old Chicago Amusement Park yes. out in Bowling? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bowling about four or five yes. years. It, did, yeah. it didn't last at all. I worked out there when I was, I guess, like 1977, yeah. 78, I, used to had a, I had a job out there on yeah. weekends. I worked mm -hmm. out there. And um, I remember thinking it was the best thing since the invention of Kleenex, but it just did not last. Yeah. No, it, they, it, they had over. an anchor store yeah, they, they would have been like Mall of America has the same kind of concept where mm -hmm. they, have a, they have an amusement park. That's in what a everybody mall. says. But, yeah, uh -huh. and but so if, they, if they had an anchor store, yeah. they would have yeah. they would have survived. I think the problem would. is not enough people have boats. What's Boat. that for? Oh, the anchor, the anchor store. store. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think about it for just a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the next, yeah. the yeah. next possibility might have been the distance of the bigger crowd going, you know. Well, when Old Chicago was, was first out there, there was nothing out there. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. My point is out there. your average yeah. kid couldn't go there alone. Was there right. was no transportation. Bowling book. It was in Bowling Right down I-55. Mm -hmm. You used to get off and it was right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it, it was, was a good thing. Well, for a while it was. It was yeah. real good. It was just a little ahead of its time. Yeah. That could be another thing. They shot a couple movies there, too. Yep, they did. The Fury. The Fury was oh, one the of the shot Fury? there. Yeah, I remember Kirk when Douglas? they were making Kirk Douglas yeah. and Andrew okay. Stevens. I remember when they were making oh. that. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The the best thing I remember about uh, Old Chicago Amusement Park is I got to meet Sally Rand, the fan dancer. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, Sally Rand, who was the fan dancer during the, the Century of Progress yeah. during 1933. Yeah. She was there doing a special uh, show at the music hall they had there, and it said Sally Rand hmm. special appearance. It was one weekend and one week only. She did her fan dance there. And I thought, oh, this can't be the Sally Rand. But then mm -hmm. I thought, how many Sally Rands are there? Mm -hmm. And it was her. Mm -hmm. And I remember going up to her and talking. She had to be like in her 70s then. Mm -hmm. she, did, she died not too long after that. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember talking to her and everything. She put her arm around me and hugged me. I think I was the only kid that worked there that knew who she was, you know. And it was you indeed know, the Sally Rand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? No. That's right. I said, the only thing I wish I had, I just wish I had like a photo or something of hers. You know, something Authentic, yeah. yeah. yeah something that would be well, yeah, like you said, she didn't impress you from any other... Yeah view than the fact that she must have been somebody. But she did a show just, I remember it was one weekend, like on a mm -hmm. Friday night and a Saturday night, she did her fan dance there, just mm -hmm. one weekend and one weekend only, that was it. Mm -hmm. The fan was is quicker well than the eye or something? Yeah, say? yeah. The fan she is quicker than the eye. She used to sign her, sign her autographs from your favorite fan, Sally mm -hmm. Rand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was it well attended and the age oh, yeah. of the people, was people it more people from, from the era that remember her? A lot of people remembered her. A lot of people remembered her. Younger people went too, not knowing what she was, but a lot of people went because they thought, oh, they're going to see some naked woman. That's right, a lot of younger mm -hmm. people went. But a lot of people went because they remembered her. They remembered Sally mm -hmm. Rand. They remembered the fan dance, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that came out of Chicago. And she was one of the few that really could utilize her fan. I mean, you never well, the really two big, saw the two big attractions anything. of the two World's Fairs in Chicago, the Century of Progress Exposition in 1893 had Little Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And Little Egypt used to dance the belly dance, mm -hmm. which they called the Hoochie Coochie. They didn't even call it the belly dance, and they called it the Hoochie Coochie. And she danced on the streets of Cairo at the Midway Plaisance in the century, in mm -hmm. the uh, Columbian Exposition. Yeah. And she was a big attraction of it. And then 1933, on the streets of Paris, Sally Rand dancing the fan dance was a mm -hmm. big attraction for mm -hmm. the fair. There were big draws to the fairs. Well, yeah. with the modesty in that of oh, yeah. at that time, that no. was like, wow. Well, Sally Rand was arrested many times yes. for, for indecent exposure yeah. and different things. She was, and she was on TV for a while, too, mm -hmm. and things. And that. She Do we know if Sally Rand did indeed dance nude? All the pictures no, I've didn't. seen of her, uh, she looks nude from the rear she, no, in she, 33. She, she, always wore, yeah. she always wore a body stocking. Really? Yeah, she always wore, she always wore a body. But, but, the, never, but, but the fans gave her the illusion of yes, nudity. Yes, yeah, she was she never did. totally yeah. nude, yeah. I was going to say, I thought it was illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah she was never totally nude, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gene, Gene Shepard, the guy, you know, that writer, Gene Shepard, he's humorous. The, yeah. the guy that wrote that, uh, that made it into a Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Right. He yeah. said, he, he recalled, he was writing from a carrier here, and he said, big White Sox fan of his kids, his uncle and his father and his uncle went, they saw Babe Ruth. At the All Star game, and they saw 
Sally Wren on the same day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Babe Ruth's home run in the All Star first first All Star game in Sally Wren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes too, like your upbringing, uh, you you didn't hear the uh, depth of what that person accomplished. You know, say I can remember the lines for Frank Sinatra. Yeah. You know, he was just a little young kid who had some different sound. Somebody sure. said, but we didn't, you know, we weren't the depth of him, you know, so we saw him, we saw him, mm -hmm. but then later you realized you saw a legend, and, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and maybe they were right next to you, you would not have thought of the autograph, or you just went and saw him, you know, so. He sure was a skinny kid, and, wasn't he? Oh, Lordy, yes, he was, he <laughs> yeah. was really, yeah. really skinny yeah, kid. Them in the wild. And, yeah. um, but the thing is, we had that access, all our theaters had wonderful stage show. Sure, used to have you a lot got of that. Your yeah. movie and mm -hmm. your stage show. Yeah. Which probably today is a hundred, hundred and fifty dollar ticket. Oh yeah, I was gonna oh, say you didn't have to, you know, to go see a show before you didn't have to go take a movie oh, down the no, house. And you just, no, you, know, you paid yeah. your dollar, dollar yeah. and a quarter and no. you and you could stay all day. And top ranking mm -hmm. performers. Oh, you saw good yeah. people. Yes. The, even the side acts yeah. were. You saw you real know, good people, up yeah. And coming. Old Chicago was trying to do that. They were trying to. The, the mm -hmm. place the ball, yeah. was talking mm -hmm. about. They were trying to bring back some of that old Chicago mm -hmm. stuff, some of that. But I it just, it just it didn't work. It just didn't work. It didn't work. Really yeah, just, it just kind of didn't. Um, no, everybody didn't have a car like today. Yeah, and, and the rents were very high there. Just mm -hmm. a teeny, mm -hmm. a tiny little store there. Just a little novelty store there at that time was like $1,000 a month, which was, you know, in the 70s. That was a tremendous amount of money. And weren't the stores all like like designed in a certain certain Moots. style of, of architecture there yeah it was it was certainly yeah, yeah. usually it was a theme and then, you know, then what was some... happening was people as soon as their lease was up they were just closing and that was it so what they tried mm -hmm. doing then was leaving because the way it was was the amusement park was in the center mm -hmm. and then all the way around it was you shop. had Forest. shopping mm -hmm. right in restaurants each each corner had a food court in the beginning, when you came in, was the Columbia House restaurant. It was a big restaurant. And mm. if you sat there by the windows, it overlooked the amusement park. Mm -hmm. And um, it just never caught on. What they tried doing then was running half of it, mm -hmm. and then everybody's leases on that half expired, and they were just mm -hmm. running the park, and um, it just didn't work. They remodeled the park. They tried doing things mm -hmm. to it. They just couldn't draw the business, did, and it just closed. Did hmm. anything have to do with this is enclosed with the, all this noise? Any noise? No, it wasn't that bad. Like I, I said, I worked there. So yeah, I worked there, and it wasn't the noise thing wasn't that bad. It had a... Uh, a hollow tone yeah. to it. What, mm -hmm. what would you like an echo? Right, and then Ooh. it was part of the thing when they redesigned the park. They redesigned it like in different levels and stuff. To yeah, sort of cut down on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, they have like and baffling and stuff like that. In the, yeah, in the upper air. Yeah, they did that, and uh, it just just didn't okay. work. Yeah, mm -hmm. like uh, noise, noise abatement, noise oh, sound, oh, sound Yeah, and yeah. it yeah. was, it was called Chicago. 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 Oh, yeah. Chicago. 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 Yeah. yeah. Then the building stayed empty for a number of years, and uh -huh. a friend of mine out in Union, Illinois. Um, he oh, going, yeah, now that's another... He was going to buy that with two millionaire friends. They were going to mm -hmm. buy it, and they were going to put, like, deluxe condos in there and have mm -hmm. swimming pool and track mm -hmm. and everything. Not everything. It would be like a self-contained community, and it just it, it didn't, just didn't, didn't work. It had replicas of the, the lines from the Art Institute yeah. up front. Mm -hmm. Thinking of the, uh, uh, the amusements that were there... What was the age range that was, was it a big age range or was it more for oh. little kids or more for like teenagers? No, it was they tried to do something that appealed to everybody. They tried to do that. Yeah. Uh, they had a circus and then they also had a music hall too. So mm -hmm. they had like stage shows in there and then they had circus shows. Uh, their rides, they had kitty rides, they had you know, they had Chicago Ferris Loop, wheel. a court yeah. roller Everything. coaster, and they had a yeah. Ferris wheel, tilt world, all the traditional mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And they had everything else too, but they um, it just didn't catch on. Mm -hmm. You know, it, at first it was real popular, but then it didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went there two or three times. The kids were small. Well, I remember going in there, but the stores were around the outside. And they had like different shops that appealed to different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one was for obviously the black young kids. It's called Brothers and Sisters. Oh. <laughs> There's a young black guy and a young black girl clerk sitting in there just talking to each other. No, no, no. But see, yeah, that's we, what was happening. They just yeah. weren't selling we them. Were, and yeah. we weren't ready, possibly, for that new concept yeah. of, of uh, d uh, just thinking of the shops. Yeah, so I it, just was a little, it was a little ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just mentioned our neighborhood offered us If you would have had needed. the same thing today, like what, like you said, like an anchor Mall store in there or mm -hmm. a movie complex in there. Oh, yeah, oh they could have started. Oh, mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you all of America. The, you would have had the adults going to all the stores, the department yeah. stores. Mm -hmm. And like the kids, kids play. Kids go, the kids there go to the park. Go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. I think that was the original idea, but it didn't work it out that way. It didn't work out. It's a shame. It was a 
Yeah. God bless them for trying. But yeah. Another place that was big in the 80s out in the suburbs, not so far west, was Dispenses Kitty Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you heard that? Oh, yeah. 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 Now, I don't think they had many rides or anything, but it was yeah. a great focal point there for was youngsters. Mm -hmm. Dispenses Kitty Kingdom, and then they had the Castle of Toys. So it was, right. the, it was the toy store and then the... the it was uh, a complex, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Was that indoors or was that outdoors? Mainly outdoors, as I okay. remember. Bill yeah. Jackson, who did Cartoon Town on WFLD, mm -hmm. would do a lot of... BJ show and all that. Yeah, really? Is, that right? yeah. Uh -huh. is he still alive, Bill Jackson? Or yes, he, he is. Away? He's, still, he's around? still around. He's not around here, though, is he? I don't think he's in this area anymore. Cartoon then, John, uh, I remember him with the blob and yep. yeah. Mother Plum Tree and all that. Yeah. These characters. Dirty Dragon. Yes. BJ and Dirty Dragon. He did yeah. a number of shows on WLS as well. Yeah. He did a Giggle Snort Hotel. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, another, local, uh, another local guy that came out of Chicago, yeah. Cool. A lot of children's television. Yeah. And how about Adventureland? Are you aware of that on Medina or Country Club's land? Santa's Village. Yeah, they went next door to each other. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. been. They reopened yeah. Santa's Village. Yeah, they did mm -hmm. something with that. They reopened mm -hmm. it. Right, yeah. I think you're right. But uh, I still think you so need a place where you don't have to go too far to go to it. Too much need of transportation. Mm -hmm. Somehow you could get there on one bus or one. I think those are the the ways yeah. that people want to travel now. They're I think you're you know, right. they're tired. They just yeah. want to get there. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. And that's what our Riverview and that did. Oh, you yeah. got they were there? in the neighborhood, yeah. yeah. And you were there Take forever. A streetcar there, sure. Oh, well, I was gosh, gonna say yeah. the end of the old old groves where they were at the end of the streetcar line. Yeah, yeah. You go to the, I mean which way you go there was one. Picnic. Any yeah. anywhere you wanted to go. You know then again, that's one thing I don't remember. Well that's what happened. That's one thing I don't remember. By the time I came along the streetcars were gone. Were they? I can remember seeing some of the tracks from where they used to oh, go yeah. and they took them out, but I, no, I don't remember great. the streetcars. The last was the Wentworth line in like nineteen sixty two. The very, very first time I went to New Orleans, New Orleans still has their old Saint Charles historic streetcar line. And now they put new ones on the waterfront called the Painted Ladies. There's one called the Desiree, right? Uh, yeah. The Desire. Oh the Desire. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a defining moment about two weeks ago at Six Corners. I was being interviewed by a local neighborhood theater group, youngsters in their 20s. One was even an instructor at uh, Amundsen High School. Yeah. Got to talking, and he one fellow looked at me and said, what is a streetcar? Yeah. <laughs> and I had to go into that, sort of picture of interurban with the tracks, and then, mm -hmm. then they couldn't even understand trolley buses that succeeded yeah. all streetcars. So yeah. you really had that generational gap, and all of a sudden somebody's asking you, mm -hmm. Something major from your childhood. What's a streetcar? And know? how about then, the speedy one? On yeah, the New Orleans. Street. See, New Orleans still has their. They got the oldest streetcar line in the United States. Who does? Saint, no. The St. Charles older line. Older than San Francisco. Yeah, older than oh, San Francisco. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 They they do. Do. San Francisco. Well, that came out of the cable car. Yeah, that was yeah. my next thing. New Orleans really has the streetcar oldest streetcar line, but if you want to see everything, if you want to see them all, you go to San Francisco. Yeah. They got cable cars, streetcars, the buses. They have everything. Terrific. Their public transportation system. It's amazing city. Yes, it is. Toronto has a. Yeah, and it is so system. easy to get around. Isn't and, it? Yeah, you take the, the bus or the streetcar or, or the trolley, the cable car. And so anyway, is yes. dark. Yeah. I mean, you know, a of workshop hill and this and that. Yeah, Lombard, all that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. God. Uh -huh. That's an old, an old fisherman's uh, war. Uh, uh, an old term that was even on the traffic accident reports up until the 70s. What is a traction street? You know, traction? Uh -huh. You know, a streetcar was on a track. Yes. Yeah. Traction, traction magnate. Mm -hmm. You ever see Citizen Kane, the movie? Mm -hmm. The yes, song that goes, yes. you got the traction magnates on the run. That's the streetcar people. Mm -hmm. So but what's the difference between a streetcar then and a cable car? Cable car that's underneath. Uh -oh. pull them cable up. car runs underneath. It works on a chain, and it's it just goes like, one like way. Like if somebody's yeah. actually doing that. When the that. cable car, the outside does. When the cable car gets to the end of the line, I had to watch this when I went to San Francisco to see how I do this. It, take it, them off it, the line. it goes on a platform, mm -hmm. and it rotates. It turns around. Mm -hmm. You unhook it from one end. You hook it on the other end, and away it goes. Streetcar runs on lines overhead, electric oh, lines. And then we had the electric buses for a while. Electric buses. Was it the same? Same wires? as the, the electric buses are almost the same as the uh, the streetcars. Except mm -hmm. they can move in and out. Yeah, yeah. they're not mm -hmm. yeah, they the could come, yeah, they could come to the curb. They didn't uh, have the Grand stay. Avenue, Adam, Forty Seventh Street, Wentworth. Uh, Chicago should have kept one streetcar line just for historic. Just Isn't to, nice. just to yeah. keep yeah. one yeah. line. Mm -hmm. They were they were talking about running mm -hmm. one from ri from North Riverside to go downtown, like to Navy Pier, uh -huh. just for old times' sake. But it never took off. Well, if yeah. they ever got yeah. restarted, you'd see more because for, it was real was reliable, yeah. was clean, yeah. right? And for driving, you knew they were going to be there. Yeah. You you weren't. They ran every few minutes. Ding, ding. Yeah. Like I said, I never, I never, I, never, I don't remember the streetcars in Chicago, but I, everybody talked about them. You know, my parents, yeah. and so everybody always talked about the streetcars. Yeah. So the very first time I went to New Orleans, I had a run for the streetcar to ride it just to see what it was all about. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you can see them. You've been to uh, yeah. Union, Illinois, ever? The yeah, yeah. Museum, oh, yeah. the, the, museum, yeah. the Red Hornets, mm -hmm. the, green, the, the Red Rockets, John's Green Hornets, Green Hornets, Madison, right, right down Western Avenue. 
from Howard Street all the way to the far south side, they used to have the streetcar, and they had rails in right in the right in the mm-hmm. in, in the middle of the road, and then they had safety islands, mm-hmm. that's right. and that's where you would stand, you know, to wait mm-hmm. to get on the bus and. God only knows how many accidents there People were. People used to do everything on the streetcars. Yeah. They did they did funerals off the streetcars. Yeah. They put the That's casket right. on the yeah. streetcar. Yeah, they did so everything and with the streetcars. I, yeah. I lived at Addison and Western, and I got on the streetcar and went all the way down to 95th and Western mm-hmm. Avenue yeah, to the Evergreen uh, uh, Plaza. Plaza down there. Because at that time, there was a radio station in there, WDHF, the Devon, the Devon Hi-Fi. Really? And what, what I used to do is I used to be home listening to... To, to, uh, it was an FM station. I think it was 94.7. I think. That's right. Yes, Kevin, you're right. Uh, they and they would play at that time the old time big band music. Uh, that, Wayne uh, King and uh, Jan Garber. Yes. Yeah. They've had about eight call letters in 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And and I would I would they would play the music like Wayne King, Guy Lombardo, Jan Garber, whatever. And I would call them up and say, "Save me that album. I want that album." And if you look right over there. On the shelf right there, that's all the stuff, and I went there one time. There's Toots on Baker, right? The first yeah. album? Yeah, it's the first Baker. one. Yeah. And, and I used to take and, and pick up a whole big stack of records and get back on the streetcar and come all the way back down. Now, a trolley bus is where they had wires, two wires go, went over, and then they would have the big extension that go out from the top of the bus to hit the wire. And uh, several times they would go down. My uncle, my Uncle Joe, he used to drive a, a trolley bus down the uh, down North Avenue, and uh, cable cars. I was never. Uh, I mean, when, when you're talking about cable cars, that's something I never. Uh, San Francisco's yeah, really the only ones that have. Yeah. Um, the oldest oh, we one. Did. We, we certainly we the, did. We certainly did. cables. Yeah, from about the, the 1880s to the early 1900s, the Chicago had the oh. largest cable. So there was a quick transition from cable cars to street cars, cars, which I'm a little vague on. Yeah. Street cars. Yeah. We had a lot of cable cars. The, the cable cars in Chicago were kind of defeating their own purpose. The reason they put them in San Francisco, why they became famous for them, was they started off with horse. They Poor horses off, got they, killed that way. Well, yeah. they couldn't do it because it was right. so hilly. The hills, they yeah. had trouble right, with them. Right, so that's yeah. why the electric uh, cable cars worked out really nice. Yeah. We were cable right. cars take like you halfway so. to the stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought, you know, like I said, you knew where your traffic was. You. You know, I saw many an accident, though, on the safety zones. I oh, mean, sure. We stood yeah, yeah. in the middle of the street, and the part of the safety zone had a big stone, you know, mm-hmm. that was a sense of direction. And some car would, you know, yeah. hit it. I've always, I've and, always said And I that, think, yeah. picking up on John's point, the biggest problem with the trolley buses that seemed like a very good idea, very uh, efficient and such, any kind of bad weather, like an ice storm, the trolley would invariably come down, oh. and the motorman would have to run out yeah, and put the trolley is, back yeah. for several minutes. Some kids would pull it off. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And, and same with the streetcar. The okay. guy would have to get it back on the we line. We once again interrupt our proceedings for some messages of interest and importance. Hey. Well, friends, the winter season is here, and it's time to make sure that the roof on your home is ready for the winter season. So now is the time to check your roof and make sure that the roof is in good shape. If you have a bad roof, your attic or crawl space will get mildew or mold and could get drip, drip, drip on the ceilings in your rooms, which will do damage to the ceilings. So sooner or later, you're going to have to get the roof repaired or replaced. So don't have double expense. Call Best Brothers Roofing at area code 630-616-1359 and Mike Best will drive over in his shiny red truck with ladders on top and Best Brothers Roofing signs on the doors. Mike will look at your roof and give you an estimate and go from there. So once again, don't have drip, drip, drip on the ceilings or double expense, call Best Brothers Roofing at area code 630-616-1359 for a free estimate on your roof. Best Brothers Roofing, 630-616-1359. Call today for a free estimate. Now, back to our discussion. Jack? Scared me. Here we are. We're <laughs> not, at the, not quite at the home stretch, but we're on the far turn. Part five. 
<laughs> and we're going back. Let's refresh everyone's memory as to who's here. Yeah. Going starting with, oh, Bob Trasic. Yeah. I'm Timothy Little. Your announcer, Rich Lang. Jeanette Frontier. Kevin Zaflick. Jack Ryan, also known as Red sometimes. But they called me a lot of things was on the three-wheeler. <laughs> okay, transportation. We were with our cable cars and street cars, and we had uh, one time, of course, street cars were horse-drawn at one time. We know, going back, mm -hmm. you see a lot of uh, like re representations of that in old Coney Island or pictures about... The predate of the cable cars, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyway, my own personal feeling is uh, I thought that we never should have taken them out, the street cars, that is, here. It was a very... Me, what really sound, dependable means of transportation, it was clean, mm -hmm. and uh, someone said it wasn't, uh, parts weren't available or something like that, which I found hard to believe that you couldn't get parts to, re mm -hmm. to fix these things. You had the real old ones with these red rockets, they were called. Well, right. there's often a problem with the mix of cars on streetcars. You know, the streetcars, if there was an accident or something, a streetcar would be locked in. There was a well, terrible accident in the early 50s when a... Uh, the gasoline truck was, and oil truck uh, was hit by yeah. a streetcar. Now, listen, my, 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 I would have been about four at the time this happened. My older sister was four years old. I mean, she was about eight. We lived at, 60, at 44th and Shields. So this was a Thursday or a Monday because it was a shopping night. My mother and my sister Joanne, the older girl, went over to 63rd and Halstead shopping area, which is one of the busiest in the world at the time. Inglewood, sure. Yeah, Inglewood. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened, and the radio gave the report it's happening at 63rd and Halstead. So my dad got some pretty anxious moments until they got home, for sure. I know I, I was too young to really remember uh, that particular incident, but uh, as such, but uh, that's what it was. It was 63rd and Wentworth, which would have been like half mile east of there, or six six blocks east of there, mm -hmm. 200 west, about three quarter mile east of where had, where they said it was. So but yeah, anyway. you never you never heard of a. Uh, uh a streetcar fire or that so right, tragic right. And, and many people burned to death on it and you know it, it ate out the whole yeah. inside of, of a, re, uh, a lot of people were trapped street inside the streetcar. They were trapped, yeah, yeah was because, because wasn't it an, an oil truck or something? I believe so. Like, yeah, that yeah. was. Something yeah. like I that. Guess one of the yeah, doors I mean, was disabled, it, it couldn't open. Didn't mm -hmm. have a chance is yeah. one yeah. of those, you know. Yeah. I know the, uh, the, the, the Green Hornets we talked about where I guess they were the, the uh, the most Cats modern, now. Now. Yeah. yeah, oh boy. Those were special order for Chicago, someone told me. They were, they were one, one half time again bigger than the others, longer. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you had this huge, very sleek, smooth, sleek looking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. green and white. So it was named you after. You could hardly hear them even. You know, Post World War II, they, they came out. The named after, of course, the radio character of the same name, Green Hornet, mm -hmm. I imagine, right. wouldn't you? <laughs> but, uh, and uh, someone said, oh yeah, they took those and they put them on the L. That wasn't true. They, were they, had, the L, they had Green Hornet. They had trains that were called the Green Hornet on the L, did they not? Or is that just know. the term that they used for the green painted that could be. L cars? Well, I think they used a lot of parts from the Green Hornet streetcar oh, on the L cars. But it wasn't that they just put, put different there, wheels no. on them and made them on L all the time. Maybe so, yeah. 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 But uh, uh, they, were, they, were the, they were like the most modern thing then. So. Mm -hmm. And they were, as I say, they were dependable. Yeah. And uh, all weather, they were just clear. Keep that track clear, and, and it was it was your transportation. I mean, uh, sure. people didn't have, you know, maybe you, uh, if you had uh, hmm, twenty houses on a block, the, your side mm -hmm. of the street, twenty across, you're lucky if there were ten cars right. mm -hmm. that anybody well, owned. The, the trouble, the downfall with the street cars was they were cheap and they were reliable. Oh that's, gosh, <laughs> that's the kiss of death. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something that's true. efficient and that works, we got to get rid of it. You know, yeah. four yeah. cents to ride it, eight cents yeah. to ride it. Yeah. I mean, you know, compared to what I yeah. heard the other day of CTA, a hundred dollars, three hundred dollars for the pass, and uh, yeah, I don't know what they pay now. Easily, yeah, eighty yeah. or ninety dollars. Yeah, I mean, it costs three, four hundred a month, at least, mm -hmm. yeah. a month on the train. It's more than like two twenty-five for a yeah. train ride. Yeah, can you imagine? And uh, so you know, and you could. It easy on, easy off. I mean, you could mm -hmm. stand in the open back and literally mm -hmm. jump off if you had a without them even stopping. You know. are, are we all familiar uh, with the uh, railway museum in Union, Illinois? By oh, chance? most yes. definitely. Yeah. Right. Right. Anyone out in Radio Land who has never been there, that's <laughs> what a family trip that is. I mean. And if, you go, and if you go right down the street from the railway museum, go down to Seven Acres Antique Village and Museum. It's right down the way there. Um, they have the, hmm. one of the largest collections of antique Edison phonographs and memorabilia in the United States. 
Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Larry, Dun- owned by the Dunley Company. They used to live out in Berwyn. They yeah. lived out in Berwyn, and then they bought that uh, property out there, and they built a museum out there. They do, in the summertime, they do Wild West shows and stuff. Yeah. And um, oh, I remember yes. the Antique Village being Yeah, they have a real big collection yeah. of the Edison phonographs. And I know that, because when I first started collecting, I collect Edison oh, phonographs and records. When I first started collecting, Larry Dunley really gave me some breaks and got me started with collecting in that, yeah. For many years, well, very, nice, very nice. The folks show out we there. had the uh, a couple times ago now, mm-hmm. or last time. Yeah, with the uh, you know, presidential old. Oh, party. with the records. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you for that. Yeah. Have you ever used speaking wire, which is like this metal wire, and it was kind of like the precursor to audio tape? I have no idea what that is. A wire recording these yes. all right? No. I have two of them that someone had donated to us because I run. No, I don't. I don't know I, what that is. No. Okay, I'll have to bring it in sometime or give it to John. I've got two of them. I can't play them. They're probably well over 100 years old. How about Speaking the by, I never, I never heard uh, of Museum of Broadcasting? They might answer you. Uh, um, it's a possibility. They were made by Sears, Roebuck, and Company. I think. Uh-huh. Hmm. Speaking Wire. I yes. ne- I've never even heard I've of it. I've heard of Wire Recordings Bruce before. Bruce Dumont. Yeah. Yes, yes. And he would give you some answers, I bet. Possibly. Or somebody there. Well, you, know. you mentioned the Museum of Broadcast Communications. Mm-hmm. I work with the Museum of Classic Chicago Television. Oh. That's fuzzymemories.tv, so I'm going to plug in there. That's an oh. online museum. Was All right. Yeah. Classic okay. Chicago? Okay. Yeah, Museum of oh. Classic Chicago Television. Hmm. So look that up later. Hmm. Fuzzy sure. Memories. Chicago uh-huh. Classic uh-huh. Television. Wow. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, Commercials, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff we were just talking exactly. about. Exactly. Very Rainer Show, Bozo. And most of it is yeah. stuff that was recorded off the air oh. with home recordings from like the oh, 70s, okay. early 80s, late oh, 60s. Okay. So not commercial. Stuff. And the uh, Washington Library gives a lot of information. The Washington out. Yes, you could ask for L- lunchtime little question. theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uncle Johnny Coons. Yeah, that this is that stuff <laughs> that I'm aware of, but that's yeah. after yeah. that was there were no mm-hmm. home recordings of that stuff. Johnny Coons mm-hmm. was the guy who was I was oh he was getting uh, uh, Emmys, local Emmys, Peabody Awards for his great know. children's work. Little round face, glasses, mm-hmm. derby. He would he would have little sketches on. He'd show like snub Pollard movies from the 20s or whatever. Silence, you <laughs> know. Chaplin's probably, uh, Harry Langdon, the three tons of fun. The tons That's of fun another film. thing that we never touched on that is the film industry. A lot of people don't know that, but the film yeah. industry started Chicago in Chicago. Really oh, yeah. the, old, the old oh, yeah. SNA studio well, is still there. So mm-hmm. they, one afternoon, yeah. Yesterday, yeah. I think it was a Friday, yeah. uh, he's signing off. He says, goodbye kids, have a good weekend. That all hold God that bless you. That'll <laughs> yeah. well, it's just as the uh, he thought he was off. He said that'll hold the little illegitimate children for <laughs> no, another week. He didn't quite say it that way. No, yeah. I said yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, he, was <laughs> he was gone. But then again, when one door closes, another opens. He went to the West Coast. He worked in commercials and really? in television, animation, voiceovers. So <laughs> you might remember this uh, from The Simpsons when they had Blabo. The the story he's telling. Ended up as a part of a The Simpsons show. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Castanella. Oh, is that right? Dan yeah. Castanella based Krusty the Clown on Bozo the Clown. Bob I know Bell. that. Yeah, I know it's so, based on Bob Bell. So yeah. there was an episode where it was Blabo, and and that was the same <laughs> bit that they used with the. <laughs> but thing, that's so. a true one, though. Yeah, nice. but it ended up being a, a, yeah. a, a story on, on The Simpsons. I know Krusty came straight from Bozo. Bozo, I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah uh-huh. absolutely. Well, and, and Dan like voiced him too. Yeah. Twenty local Bozo franchises. In the oh yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. This guy, um, what was his name? Um, in Chicago or what? No, no, the guy no they were all around the country. They Larry Harmon. Larry Harmon. Yeah. He mm-hmm. didn't yeah. create the character. No. He just licensed he it, it from, yeah. from Capitol he Records. He bought it. And well, they he had the cartoons, too. I remember Bozo yeah, cartoons. Yeah, that was, that was the whole bit. You, he JR bought production. the color, you bought the color uh, Bozo cartoons, and mm-hmm. you could make your own franchise. Whoa, oh, oh. really? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, but then they were all their live Bozo. Boy, his sidekick was Butchie Boy. Yeah. Butch. Butch, yeah. yeah with the little circus outfit. And Bozo was a boss with like a... Probably Paul Freeze's voice. But every but major city had a bozo show. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. They all yeah. Did, yeah. So Chicago was the last one. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so he made himself some, well, even getting up out of bed in the morning, he had a lot of bread coming in with that. But it was popular. And When I uh, was expecting my last child, I knew there was a long wait for oh, bozo because yeah. mm-hmm. my other kids had been on it and uh, seen it. And uh, so I put a, a card in the mail. And uh, I think when he was four years old, <laughs> you know, he got that notice that we could go down or the tickets, whatever. I forget what happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was, you know, that kind of wait, four yeah. years, and what eight years. I don't understand, years. and no one's ever answered this question for me, is if the wait was so long for tickets and you mailed in so long, when you moved, 
how did WGN track you down? I mean, you could forward mail for you could forward mail for a number of years, but you wouldn't forward right. mail seven but to it, twelve years. In yeah. my case, I was at that end. Yes, yes, yes. It, it was. I couldn't. I don't tell think you would bother. It would just go on to the next person. Uh, well, yeah, yeah I, I just don't yeah. know. But uh, that was so popular. But you waited. I yeah. mean, you oh, yeah. waited. Yeah. Ten years late. Right. When the guy, oh, yeah. yeah. The guy and girl first met, and they thought maybe they might be. They sent it right away. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, few people know it, but we got a wedding list almost as long for tickets to see this show. Oh, I'm sure so that. Folks, you can direct your, your mail uh, right into our own uh, box office department of the John DeVille I've Studios. never heard anybody have a bad word to say about Bob Bell doing Bozo. No. Nothing. Well, that's pretty good stuff. Only, no. one, only one friend of mine, he was a kid, and he, he was on Bozo Circus, and he didn't get to do the grand prize game. They did, did the other game, and they used to do the other game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he said he didn't get game. He was afraid of Bozo because he yelled at him. He was doing the game wrong. And he said he didn't like him. He was oh, crying. Oh, <laughs> see, he might have had one of them. Yeah. But they do say that once he was through with the show, Bob Bell what? you couldn't get him like, out again? You were good friends with No, he no. would not yeah. do anything no. that was. He was very uh, quiet. I heard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I never heard anybody yeah. say a bad mm -hmm. thing about him. He stayed on as a staff announcer too. Well, everyone in GN had multiple jobs, and he, oh, yeah. did, he yep. did a lot of the voiceovers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And there was one Bozo Circus was live from noon to one p.m. Yep. And he also did an audio-only newscast with slides. And one time they did a Christmas show or something like that where he was still in Bozo's <laughs> costume and he did a newscast in his normal Bob Bell voice and only the people that were that in the studio yeah. knew that knew Bozo yeah. was. It was Bozo. Yeah, knew, yeah. knew what it actually was. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bozo, Bob Bell and I, we used to sit elbow to elbow at the Aragon Ballroom when, when WGN would do the, the big band music from, from, from the Aragon. And right now on, on the uh, Chicago media, medium and radio, uh, there's a big article about Bob Bell. I think he's, uh, they have a memorial or something. Uh, they show his picture, uh, you know, in civilian clothes and also in, uh, yeah. in his, in his, uh, in his costume. And and he was a great guy. Very, very nice person. Very nice. Everybody, like I said, you never yeah. heard a bad word. And Ray yeah. Rayner, the same thing. You never yeah. heard anybody mm -hmm. say a bad thing about him. Um, like he, uh, I knew Ray Rayner from when I was, a, when I was a kid, where I lived in Summit, we had, the Candlelight Dinner Theater. Oh, yes. And yeah. Ray Rayner used to, he was, uh, that's why he left, part of the reason why he left Bozo Circus, and he continued on with Ray Rayner, and then after a while he got rid of Ray Rayner and Friends, because he wanted to concentrate more on theater. theater. Mm -hmm. He liked doing live theater. And they had the Candlelight Theater and the Forum Theater, and he used to do all the Neil Simon comedies at the Forum. Mm -hmm. And I still loved to I watch used him. To see him. I used to love yeah. to run over when I wasn't, because I used to work at Candlelight. When I wasn't working at Candlelight, I would run Just across, go, yeah. and go watch him do his scenes and stuff, and then run back, and, mm -hmm. that. and he was just the nicest man. He was very, mm -hmm. he was like everybody's uncle. He was, was very, a, very nice he was a prisoner of war? He was actually a prisoner of war during the war, and he escaped. He got he got away. He got he never talked about it until later in life. No, most of those guys didn't yeah. say much mm -hmm. about the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah uh, John, is, yes. was the Bob Bell um, part of Lee Phillips' family? Or, she was married you know, to she some married to different a, guy, though. Yeah, okay. they were involved they in were somewhere, a, yeah. yeah. All right, I just yeah, wondered if that I, was I always a, thought that, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. But they say, too, uh, I think Tom McKenna worked for uh, Andy Frayne, and he used to have ushers there. Supposedly, Bob was very good with the remarks off the air, too. Like, oh, yeah. He'd say something yeah. like, hey, uh, hey, Oliver, do you like to, uh, do you like to dance cheek to cheek or do you like to face your partner? You know, stuff like that. <laughs> oh, and some other more <laughs> X-rated words, you know, <laughs> to censor up. But. Well, that's what was so funny about Bozo Circus. Like, we, um, a lot Rick, of it Klein, Rick Klein from FuzzyMemories.tv is the one who found that lost tape show that aired over Christmas on WGN. And, right. and that's right. the, the show worked for children, and then there was that whole other level that it for worked adults. for adults that <laughs> yeah. the kids just went way it's over. True. Couldn't, yeah, yeah, couldn't yeah, understand it. It's true. Right, see, yeah. See? He's ever working around there, you see. Boy, the band never has to do any work, do they? You know? yeah. <laughs> this cake needs a shot of penicillin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's like there a was a Fraser Thomas and Garfield Goose is always very good. I never heard anything negative did. about Fraser Thomas oh, over the years. I've heard, I've heard some yeah, stories yeah, I heard some things. He didn't have crowds or something. Fraser right? Thomas actually took over uh, when when Ned Locke retired okay. from yep. Bozo. That's right. Fraser Thomas took over as ringmaster and. Um, he was not used to dealing with he children. He didn't like pranks. And he well, was not used to a live really? audience. Really? He did, yeah. did Garfield Goose. I've got to watch Goose. some of those, yeah. Garfield yeah. Goose and Friends was nice. I mean, you know, right, that's what he was used to, right. Yeah. No one yeah. guest or, or right. no, no, no audience. And, the, and he also had it in his contract that he could no not pies. get hit with a pie. Yeah. But they still violated him. Yeah, they did it. They got him. Yeah, they still got him. Yeah, yeah. Another type of thing. He was, he was just a different man. He was oh, yeah. used to dealing. Yeah. He wasn't used to live audience. He wasn't used to kids. You know, well, dealing exactly. with exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was already yeah. working out of school. We used to have it on. It was on in the afternoon. We were watching it, laughing at some of the stuff then. Because if you notice, he always started off the show. He was already in conversation with one of the characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect to get the kids right in from. Mm -hmm. And he had, uh, of course, Gar. And one time, Gar would 
he'd get so excited he'd have to go downstairs and hear the typewriter. He'd type out a note to tell <laughs> Frazier what he was yeah. saying. And of course, they had Romberg, which they got somewhere else. Rabbit. Beauregard yeah. Burnside, Romberg Rabbit. Chief of the Secret Service. And there was Garfield Goose, yeah. and then I remember the nephew, uh, Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris Goose, Goose and oh, Granny yeah. Goose. Oh, yeah. Granny Goose, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 She needed a letter. Dear, dear son, I'll be, she was retired in Florida. I'll be flying up to see you, and Frazier go, Right, no, 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 jet, you know? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. the, the puppeteer for Garfield Goose was, was Roy Brown, Brown who did Cookie, Cookie the Clown. Yeah. Yeah. He, took that oh, he thought he it was a temporary job. Oh, he, did, okay. he, did, uh, he did the Garfield Goose puppets, and he also did Cuddly Deadly on the Ray Rayner show. And he did yeah. all the drawings, the, the artwork for magic, shows. Magic, yeah. uh, magic drawing board. Mm-hmm. Well, no, uh, uh, the slides and things like the that. Show the show, it, it, it would draw, it would draw out from right in your eye, you know? They'd put the screen up, and you'd hear the draw, drawing come in. Well, he had his lines in there, obviously, but in the back way. The magic drawing board. I remember the little, the little theater screen. All that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, the little theater screen. Cartoon, would hang the, up uh, the cartoons would come on. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Family Classics, the Sunday show, the, the drawings on the wall were drawn so by Roy Brown. Yeah. yeah. Roy oh. Brown did all that. He was an art student. Uh-huh. He took this, he thought it was a temporary job to do the uh, Garfield show. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very I'll talented see. man, very artistic. Yeah. And like you said, they all did double and triple duty yeah, at WGN. Everyone mm-hmm. more they did everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Long <laughs> before Bozo Circus, I remember seeing Ned Locke hosting a show called Uncle Ned Squadron Saturday morning. This is in the early 50s. Like yeah. a quiz show, he yeah. tells stories about flying, and then yeah. you asked you a question if you won. You got um, a model airplane. That was okay. a, <laughs> Captain Hart's Mountain or something. He was on that. We used to wait thing. for the buckets. You know. oh, yeah. He also did the that. weather one time. <laughs> Everything looked like Khrushchev with the toupee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we all remember Mary Hartline. Oh, yeah. I mentioned her earlier. Did you? Yeah, sure. several times. She lives downstate here somewhere now. I heard that uh, Vic Justino was looking for her down that way. Or something. Really? Yeah, it was on the way. One of our... our a woman members. in her day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, bo- uh, that's the uh, um, Super Circus. That's right. Floyd Kirshner. That's right. That's ABC. Right. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. sister got to see that when she was in Brownies, you know. She said he was such a crab hauling at the kids off the camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mars was their sponsor. So they give all the kids in the first two rows get a candy bar. Mm-hmm. They show them. Yeah. Not, you think they have them for everybody. Right? That's bad. <laughs> Cheap skates. That's no good. And they used to say the best candy on earth comes from Mars. Well, <laughs> That's a good line. It was. It was. was there, oh, yeah. you know. Wonderful. We, we Better Mars than Uranus. I think you brought this up. We used to go to uh, Mars ca- keeps their landscaping just gorgeous Isn't on yeah. Oak Park <laughs> Avenue. Mm-hmm. And we used to take our photographs there, and you yeah. know, like yeah. you want to show somewhere where you live, that was our house. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, we never paid it was attention that it made candy or anything. One of the it was can, gorgeous. One of the can companies was on right on 76th off of Loomis, and they had the most beautiful grounds there too. It was immaculate. There was a little continental or or American, no, American yeah. can, continental. No, mm-hmm. American continental. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. American was over at 59th and Western. But then they saw that all of a sudden there's weeds all over the place. Oh, yeah. You never know. But, I mean, it was, you know, and that would... About 100 years ago, I had three shares of stock in Continental Canada. Mm. And, and as much as I knew about the stock market and know today, I tried selling the stock after the company closed. I didn't, oh. know, I didn't know they were there anymore. <laughs> and I, I actually sold the shares and I got something for it. What happened to the money, though? Uh, no, I got, I got paid for them. I, got, yeah, I, made, I made a little bit of money on it, but I didn't know they, were, they weren't there anymore. When I lived on the north side, I lived a block from Continental. It mm-hmm. was on Kilpatrick. And that is the first Walmart now in Chicago. Yeah. They tore mm-hmm. all that down right. and, you know, but that was, now you talk, we got back to World War II and that. Well, all plants and that were, uh, factories were changed to uh, War, making War ammunition yeah. Or, yeah. or tanks. Yeah. Fort City they, Shopping Center was a big meeting. Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. I, don't what they, I don't know what they call it now, but I remember when I was a kid, when we used to go to Ford City, we no longer go there anymore. Downstairs used to be called Peacock Alley. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know what they call it. What do they call? I don't know. What I don't know now. either anymore. I know they changed the name. It's not Peacock mm-hmm. Alley anymore, but in the psychedelic. Well, for, and they have a huge railroad under, well, anyway, that underneath. The, that the, underneath, uh, where all those stores are, in what was Peacock Alley, uh, used to be the locker rooms mm-hmm. and stuff where people used to that worked up in the munitions. Sure, well, that, that was Tucker. Tucker got his. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that whole area of Cicero Avenue was all all industrial. Yeah, Hot Point and and uh, Cracker Jack and Tootsie Cracker Jack, Tootsie yeah. Roll. I mean, that yeah. was all for yeah. the yeah. for the uh, service. I can remember we used to go to Cracker Jack and used to they used to give you a free box of Cracker Jacks mm-hmm. and they would give you a tour through the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which, they, had a, they had like a big giant Cracker Jack box mm-hmm. in the front. It was big full camel, of all. Soup, it was full everything of everything. Yeah. Was there. Well, was they even called that one section. They had those several motels and hotels. Cracker Jack Plaza originally yeah. opened it. So. 
Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It was a nice Chicago fixture for many, many years, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also in uh, Forest Park, uh, that little mall there, too. They used to make all the planes, and mm -hmm. they have a big, you know, underground thing, too. Now, you'll never see it, but, you know, they never could take dig everything up. But uh, So, you know, see how different things were? But our can company, as I was going to say, mm -hmm. they made all the cans that now look sealed and you know how you yeah. open them with a yeah. clip and it's that an, yeah for the uh servicemen you know and all their food was called rations mm -hmm. and yep. and they fill them with soup or whatever but what we what we did do while that was there and 100 do years i guess they made um the top that would be sealed but when they made them wrong or seconds they would fling them out of the window, and they were as sharp. Mm -hmm. and, and we would play games like catching them. Oh. That, and I remember how many of us got slashed oh. on the face. Mm -hmm. but, but beyond that story, my father was the veterinarian in the neighborhood. I don't know how many kids he sewed up because we'd <laughs> haul them all. It's, it's amazing how many things you think yeah. about that you did as a kid yeah. that you thought were fun or so yeah. dangerous. And never tell oh, the yeah. parents mm -hmm. and their lip would by, be by sold. My house, ages ago, this is another one that was 100 years ago, but where, where I lived, they still live there, we used to have Little Joe's Antique Cars. And that was right by 63rd Street, right before you turned around like to go to the factories over there on 65th Street. Mm -hmm. And they used to have all the old Model T Fords and everything out there. Well, we used to go when we were kids. We would crank the Model T Fords to start. And them. drive them and all they, over. Well, no, we never drove oh, them. Oh, you didn't do but that. these cars sat there for I don't know how many years. And we would go and crank them, and they would start. And then the thing, you know, it would backfire. Yeah. It would flip on you. You could mm -hmm. break your arm or get mm -hmm. killed. Oh, we thought it was fun. We never With thought the danger was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We never thought it was anything. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah I know. We used to, you could uh, start a you couldn't start your car, but you could work, make it move push by it. hitting the gas pedal, too. Oh, and it push would start just it, yeah. Move. Said, yeah. My, and now, due to my dad's profession, during the war, you could not buy a car. For many years, you could own a car. But because of that, he could buy a car. He bought a new car, and we had our hospital, and we had a big lot. And my brother got in his new car. The one that was down here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bill, I could do a was it Bill? Uh, Joe. Joe, okay, Joe. <laughs> uh, I could, I could do uh, three programs on him. But anyway, <laughs> he got in the car, and North Avenue is east and west, mm -hmm. and he was going south, and he worked himself out till a streetcar hit that car. Ooh. Oh, they, and they couldn't see the driver. That's the end of the new car. He was six years old. Yeah. That was wow. the end of the car. Oh. And you could he never get it, a though, car. Huh? Yeah. Whoa. Nothing yeah. happened to him. Yeah, during the war years. Nothing uh, happened to him. He didn't get nothing. hurt. Yeah, His cars were solid then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, he worked that pedal, and wow. he thought he was driving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you see all the odd stories that happen in your <laughs> life. Even too. things when you're not really a kid anymore, you know yeah. better. Well, I was on the three wheeler. Used to come out of 39th in California. Well. We get to all these parade details downtown, so we'd hop on the Stevenson and go down. We would race down the Stevenson. Mm. Now, this is a three-wheeler. Oh, and it's not going to be... Oh, oh. Oh. Well, the, the captain found out he had governors put on him. No more racing. You couldn't go <laughs> fast anymore. Whoa. I can imagine. I be, would be here talk, talking about it. Yeah, well, no, there's truth to that. <laughs> you get one of those, there's no, there's no minor there's, accident. There's no help for that, mm. is it? <laughs> you, know, you know, when you think of like so many kids' toys, like darts and stuff we used to play with in that. Yeah. We never thought they were... We, thought no. that, we never thought that you could lose and, your and eye with I think you were funny and yeah. hit it right at your friend. Yeah. Or and cap and pistols. We had the guns. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Was anybody ever with guns? BBs and the pellets we used yeah, to shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had some of those actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody in Scouts or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts? Yeah. I was in Cub Scouts. Yeah, I was in yeah. Cub Scouts for a while. Yeah. Were you? I'm never Boy Scout. I was in Cub Scouts. I was in Cub Scouts. Well, Scouts you get Boy's Life. You subscribe to. Mm -hmm. There must have been two dozen ads for BB guns yeah. Yeah. or twenty twos. When you think you're right, it was all like, oh, yeah. 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 and a knife. Yeah. What, kid, what kid did not want to own their own pocket knife? Right? Oh, oh. oh when, I was a kid, I, when I was a kid, I had a job. I was cutting flag on it. Remember cutting weeds? I worked so hard cutting these weeds and I got pain. I went to Star's <laughs> Warehouse and bought my first yeah. pocket knife. Yeah. Man, oh, sheath I thought, knife yeah. and scouts, you wanted a sheath mm -hmm. knife? How did we, we had all kind of other yeah. things yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stop yeah. me if I've told this one before, but when I was about seven, my, that means my older sister would have been about 11, we pooled our money around early spring. We saved to get my dad Father's Day gift, you know? So we went over to a cigar store, a tobacco shop at 63rd <laughs> in Ashland, and we thought, oh, we'll get him a knife for his 
um, toolbox, you know. We bought the knife, but it was a push button. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> they were throwing them over flick, the counter then. A flicker. Oh. <laughs> My dad called it a toad stabber or something. Yeah. Was, they were being sold openly. This is like 1953. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. went home with yeah. it? Yeah. He, goes, yeah. he got a laugh about it. He mm-hmm. just kept that, of course. Did you all own a secret ring and a secret watch with the message? Oh, yeah. no, I, only had one, one, I only had one watch. I had, a ti- I had a little Timex watch, which I still have. Mm-hmm. And that was my first watch. And I can remember when buying a watch was a real big deal. Mm-hmm. for a Secret mm-hmm. compartment. Oh, that yeah. was a graduation yeah. gift. Oh, yeah. Well, you had, oh, yeah. yeah. Little Orphan Annie or oh, uh, yeah. Captain Midnight mm-hmm. had the secret mm-hmm. stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Was the, was the secret never, message? You never told me. Yeah. They had that on the Christmas story. And you waited for that box to go. You know, and oh my gosh, isn't it? I remember the see? prizes. I don't know if they still do that. The prizes in the cereal. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they still have a little box. Yeah, yeah. They, we don't the cereal. They don't do that. The and then we used to have a soap too when I was a kid. It was called soap prize. Uh huh. There was a really? prize in the oh, bar of soap. No. Oh, in the middle so when you wore it down. My mother could never understand why we were washing so, so much the soap to get the. Oh, that I never. To get this prize. Yeah, never heard of that. It was called the middle. Soap prize. It was a toy in the middle of a soap bar. Yeah. I can remember one of the cereal companies when the Nautilus the. Atomic submarine was new. There was a little miniature where you get that inside of one of them, and you put baking powder. It would bob up and down in the uh, in the water. Is it got the? Is it you know because the as it broke down, the bubbles would fill up once. But then go down again and up and down. Not baking soda, baking powder would need. Mm-hmm. And that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. You see one now. Probably well, probably is all, all oh yeah. And nickel no. I I think between your imagination, which is lost, mm-hmm. and what you received, the two together just time, isn't it? you know on that. Happy imaginary note. Thank you for wrapping it up, ma'am. And once again, let's go for our panel. Kevin Zaflick. Jeanette Frontier. Rich Lang. Tim Little. Bob Trezik. Jack Red Ryan. And now, we're at the end. Now, once again, here's the guy who started it all. Our producer, chief electrical engineer, and all-round troubleshooter and good guy, John DeVetta. One moment, I want to say one last thing. I know I didn't say my, my closing meeting. Remember, folks, history is much more than a book you keep on the shelf. Radio. Once again, you have been listening to our monthly program, Meet the Chicago Historians, which was pre-recorded on January 21st, 2013. Our historian show is broadcast over WRHS Jack FM, 89.7 Norwich, and WRWX, Smooth FM, 88.1 Harwood Heights. We thank the managements of both stations for carrying our show. You can access our show both days as well as a back library of older broadcasts on the Internet by going to WindyCityHometown.com. And a final word wishing our good friend and longtime panelist, Ken Little. Our thoughts and prayers go for his quick recovery. Goodbye, and once again, thanks for listening. You have been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians from the John Levitt Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, January the 21st, the year 2013. This broadcast was produced and directed by John Levitt, edited by Stephen Lehman, and engineered by Tony Amato. This program was pre-recorded. Thanks for listening.